Studio in South Florida, Twist Gaming. Featuring lead broadcaster, Matt Coza. Co-host and creative genius, Josh Perry. Co-host and interviewer extraordinaire, Anne Lazito. Co-host and marketing mogul, Aaron Murphy. With appearances from special guest, Lucy. Welcome to Twist Gaming, where you get to play board games with us. Good evening, everyone, and welcome. This is Twist Gaming, as usual. Get to play board games with us. Yes, as usual, you get to play board games with us. The audio levels are wrong because Josh didn't look at it beforehand. Rule three! And I'm Matt. I'm Anne. And everything's my fault, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag... Rule three. There you go. Thank you all for joining us this evening. This is our premiere episode of Twitch Plays Madara. Uh, what What's the full name of this, actually? Uh, the name of the story the spot is the uh, Unintentional mal 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 Malium. Malum. Yeah. Malum. One. There you Whatever. go. Unintentional Malium. I, I can't say words. Act one. So, um, <laughs> first and foremost, we would like to say thank you for joining us. Second Definitely. most uh, is... Thanks for coming. I guess that's the same thing. I don't know. Uh, but no, we, what, what is the point of this stream here? So we're not g just going to be playing this game. I mean, as much fun as that would be. Can I talk now? I'll make the welcome. Sure, go ahead. The butthole face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, contact, Dan. <laughs> um. <laughs> so thank so, you so yeah, much we, for we coming to <laughs> our show tonight. Uh, Twist Gaming is known in the industry as being the premier interactive gaming uh, live stream. So this is all live. We're here. We're reading the comments. We're here with you. And the point of this show is, this is a to give you... Is pre-recorded simulation? The point of the show is to give you guys an opportunity to play games that are, you know, just coming new to the market. Maybe you don't have enough players to get together for your gaming group. I hate you so much. Um, or to play with really cool people like me and put up with doofuses like these two. <laughs> so uh, Josh is is really awesome, um, and he's been able to program a lot of cool things using Twitch here, specifically our overlay. So the concept here is if you're, you know, if you're new to the stream, if you haven't done our Kingdom Death Twitch plays or folklore Twitch plays, the audience is going to play as a character. Now there was a poll up on Twitter, so it's important that you guys follow us on social media for these kind of campaigns, so you can follow us on Facebook, Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, and come chat with us on our Discord channel, where you get to make these decisions with us. So you guys chose tonight to play as the character of Nightingale Arson. Could you put it on board cam? No, I can put it in hand cam. Oh, cool. what? Just do what I tell you to do. <coughs> so that is the character that you guys are going to be playing as in this game. Uh, can you hit the Madara campaign? The code? The, the thing you hit before the show. So there is a command I have no in idea chat, what exclamation mark, Madara. Oh, you mean the gear command? Yeah, yeah, the gear command. So if you, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I got Remy. So Valkyrie, we can play together. Um, you can click on that link and see your gear grid uh, as well as what gear you have. The consumables are not going to update because it's a static yeah. picture, right? Picture, right? So, uh, but they'll see uh, they'll see all four of our gear sets. Okay, so and they also see so they get an the cards of the those. monsters we're going to be fighting tonight. <laughs> Perfect. So that so you have an idea. Yeah. Oh, so that if you have, you know, what you want to look and see what your setup looks like, that's a great place to go. Um, so and how how do we make this interactive, Anne? When we make decisions, you'll need to know what you have in your gear for your consumables. So we make this stream interactive in a number of ways. Uh, the number one way that the stream is interactive because it's a dice chucking game is rolling dice. So since you guys, you know, can, we can't hand you the dice, we wish we could because there's a lot of them. We haven't invented that technology yet, but we can have it done digitally. So Josh created this plugin that you guys can roll dice with us. So throughout the game, I'll be requesting dice whenever there is a roll for your character. Uh, and you'll see it in chat of request dice. You can respond back with exclamation mark roll in the chat, or you can uh, download the plugin and click the button that goes on as well. Um, so, for example, here we asked for the dice. We asked for a blue die. So Eurystheus 7 was selected from the, the pool of people who submitted the dice, and they rolled a six. <laughs> so uh, what's really cool, Josh did this a little differently. So for our friends from the KDM campaign, you're going to notice a couple of different changes. Because Madara has so many die, um, and you know they, they kind of change. Why don't you leave them where they are? Because there's so much fun to play with. I can with. put it in. Or because there's so much fun. So because there's so many different die, um, and they're all different, and they have different faces. Josh actually has programmed each one of the die. So Matt, if I said I needed a blue die, a gray die, and a white die, blue, gray, white. That's nice. 
Uh, blue, uh, gray, and white. Uh, you would have all three of those command. For you guys at home, again, like Matt said, you either hit the button or exclamation mark roll. It's going to look at the pool of everybody that rolls, picks one, and that's going to be your representative. So it's like democracy. We're pretty much ancient Greece. Uh, and the results for each one of the colored die will show up like there. Like that. Yeah. And we'll go over as we play the game what the different icons on the faces of the die mean. Uh, another way that we use interactivity polls. in the stream is polls. So Josh is going to pull one up now as an example. It might right. take a few seconds because he wasn't prepared. Right. Uh, but what the poll is is we'll put up a question that uh, you would have a decision on. Yep. So uh, do you want to go left or do you want to go right? Uh, and so he's going to put who is best, Matt, Josh, or Anne. So you'll see this poll pop up. You can vote. You can either type in one, two, or three, or you can type in Matt. You can type in Anne. You can type in Josh. Those will count as well for the percentage. So we'll keep that on. You'll see that there's a time active for how long it was active. Hey, there's me. Down elevator. And if you're a subscriber to the channel, you, you get double votes. Right. So I see we, you guys we, all using. We like you more, so your vote counts more. I yeah. see you guys all using numbers. Um, if somebody could type in a name, I just want to showcase that you don't just need to do the numbers, that it'll also do the names and count those as a vote as well. So if you typed in Anne. I mean, you're winning by a pretty wide margin. There you go. Thank you, Oh, AJ. my God. I got a vote. <laughs> and Matt. Um, yeah. So see, so. And we'll ask you, you know, questions and decision points and whatnot. The third way and the the le least formalized way is this is an interactive stream. We're here. We're chatting. You're here with us. We see you. So we might just ask you questions, and we'd love for you guys to shout out in the chat what kinds of decisions or suggestions that you want to make or input to the story or <laughs> Steve. <laughs> no. He who shall not be named is above 0% for once. <laughs> are there things we can consume in this game? Yes. So there are consumables. Uh, like I said, we have the gear grids with the gear command, which do not have the consumables, but we will do our best to keep you apprised of what your consumables are. Obviously, this is our board cam, so I'm going to try and keep your stuff in view, since for the most part, the dungeons are only about yay big. Um, no bugs. And the consumables they start with are, are is in that picture, but if they get any more, there's not going to be okay. real time update. So, so without, is there anything that I'm missing? And you so guys, let me know, especially if you've been part of our KDM or folklore campaign. Uh, yes, this is going to be the mass level. So, who is everyone playing? We, t we said Twitch is going to be playing Nightingale. So I'm playing as Zeke Jong. Oh, sorry. Okay, cool. Thank you. That's another good point. So we were talking about all the interactivity and providing you guys with information. As you can see in the top, it's the top your your top left corner, right? Yeah. We okay. have this lovely fancy overlay here. So the overlay is going to be updated in real time on our end yep. and show off some of the key stats related to your characters. So Josh, what are the stats that we're showing here? Uh, so first, that is your health, the heart. Okay. Uh, next up is your defense. All right. Um, which will come up later. Uh, next is your your movement. Uh, which is the foot. And the last is your armor. And your armor works as, like, point reduction when you take damage. So if you take two damage, you have one armor, you only take one damage. It's like absorption. Gotcha. It's absorption. Okay, cool. So, uh, again, that'll be live updated on Josh's end, so you'll be seeing those stats uh, as things happen to him. So we're closing out the poll here, and I'm going to switch back to the main camera here. You didn't want to sit there and wait and see how Anne's... So I love the love. Thank you, guys. So I Matt's playing as Zeke. I'm playing as Zeke, so I don't know what kind of character Zeke is. Sure. Uh, you, um, God, I wish words worked. Th they do work if you know how to say them. You're one to talk. So <laughs> I'm playing as Zeke. Um, what are so break, take, <coughs> take me through a breakdown of what I'm seeing on this character card yeah. here. So the red circles and the gray circles there are his energy. Okay. His stamina. S sure. So that's how much stuff he can do. Okay, keep okay. going. There's more stuff uh, on the card. Nimble Fighter is like his special passive ability. Okay. So once per turn, Zeke may reroll his dodge roll. Okay. Then there's Conviction and Casting, and we'll get to that, but essentially he has two purple die. Um, this has <coughs> less to do with like magic defense and stuff. Okay, so it's kind of like a skill check almost. Yeah, so and then not kind of. Um, and then on the bottom is these characters' specific stats. Okay, so present. Uh, presence, lore, agility, perception, strength. So those are like skill. Those are more like the skill checks. Gotcha. And then these are the health, defense, and movement base stats before any modifiers. Yeah. All right. Cool. 
Um, I am playing as Remy. I mean, we could go and just show it off. But so what's really cool about this game is that there's a huge story that goes along with it. So before we even get to the first dungeon, we'll get to have a better idea of the personality of these characters. Uh, so Remy's got natural flight. What makes Remy special is that you know how, you see how some of the characters, they all look really different. Some of them have wings, some of them have horns, tails, whatever. Remy's got wings, and I mean she can fly. She can fly? She can fly. She, she can, can fly. fly. She can fly. Yeah. Um, and that's, we'll get showcased in the first round. Uh, make a move. Remy has flight for the duration of this movement. So that gives her special stuff. Again, conviction and casting. This has to do with like attacks and magic defense and things like that. Uh, what is derp made ever derp? And she's she's cute. What is herp made ever derp? She has like a little <coughs> panda thing. Um, yeah, it's like a red panda, kind of. It's, it's cute. It's black and white. Black and yellow? Black and yellow? All right. So, Josh, who are you playing as? I'm playing as Rook. All right. So Rook has Grand Physique. Um, Rook's unmodified maximum HP is 14, and he may equip an additional consumable. So he is a tankier character, I'm presuming. Oh, yeah. Uh, he starts with 14 health compared to everyone else's 12. I see that they modeled the uh, the illustration of this directly off of you. Okay. You know what's really weird? That it, you're in his crotch? <laughs> no, you <laughs> just not put that any other way. <laughs> All right. Rick has a slow start. Yeah, he doesn't move either. Like he's. I was going to sub using Amazon, but I keep getting an error that I'm not a dot com Prime user, but a dot. Uh. Aww. We appreciate. You know what though? Hmm. It's. I really appreciate the fact that not only that you went to go and sub with the Prime subscription, which is super cool, but that you had a problem and you came and let us know about it. So I just want to thank you very much, Crimson, for from for the bottom of my heart. And for those of you that uh, may be curious, if you have Amazon Prime, you should have Twitch Prime, which means you have one free sub every month. Apparently, there's exceptions to that rule. Feel free to use that on us, and then you can get more votes, so you can vote for me in those who's the best give, uh, polls. He skipped leg day in gym every day. <laughs> it's not land crab. But he didn't. Like he's His legs are still pretty big. Like, like They're not as big as his arms and his chest, but they're not dainty. Why are we discussing his physique right now? Oh, uh, it's what's talked about. Because he doesn't move, so that he's like he skipped leg day. So that's why he oh doesn't have movement. Okay. I think my favorite thing about Rook is his his glasses. Oh, they're an actual equip, an item equip. Yeah. Yeah, and they give me plus one defense. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> cool. Some I like it. Some of the stuff is cute and silly. Um, because when you show the card, it looked like <laughs> yeah, part of his legs are on you. Uh, do you want to? Do we cover all of the administrative stuff? I think so. I think we're ready to start the story. So I I know you were telling me before that this is a story driven game. Yeah. Yeah. Oh goodness. I didn't know I was rehearsing for a role in Hollywood today. <laughs> Theme wise, this is not KDM. So we've split up a couple of the roles. Uh, if you've joined us for our KDM streams before, Matt's actually really good when it comes to recording and like doing voice acting and stuff. To yeah, I, it's ter it's a lot. But it's, I mean it's a cool story. It's just more than what I've expected for Cool story, bro. Game. So we were going to record something. It didn't work out. So we're doing a lie, a table read, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, yeah, the table read. There yeah. we go. So are so we starting Matt, this? Matt's, Matt's going to be voicing Zeke and the couple of random male, male characters that will come up in the story. As well as generic narration. <laughs> and generic narration. Uh, Anne is going to be doing um, Nightingale, Remy, and... Uh, Shilas? The females. The, th the three females, yes. The females. The three males. <laughs> three females. Uh, and I'll be doing Rook because no one wants to hear me talk. <laughs> You've got and three I can't lines. Talk. Okay. Did so you want to go get us dinner while we read this mm -hmm. story? You could have gone You could have gone to the bathroom now. <laughs> could have. <laughs> All right. So uh, is there anything else that we need to know before we begin? <laughs> no, let's start off. <laughs> Pause the call. All right. So let's do it. Uh, before the mast, Nightingale crept almost silently through the crowd, eyes fixed on her target. There were at least a hundred of her fellow students here, thronging about and chatting excitedly in their teams of four. Her victim wasn't watching anything but the cigarette in his fingers. He didn't stand a chance. Air rushed around Nightingale as she jumped, latching onto Zeke's back with both arms like a monkey around a tree. And? Zeke! <laughs> that was a delayed response there. <laughs> Super delayed. Her voice came out somewhere between a squeal and a screech, loud enough that a few nearby students turned to stare. Her friend grunted and spluttered with the cigarette tumbling away from his mouth. You trying to kill me? Yep. Nightingale dropped to the ground behind him. You don't need my help for that. 
She extinguished the still smoldering cigarette with a well-placed step. You've been here as long as I have, two years away from Earth, and you're still poisoning yourself. Zeke only grinned in response. It also makes you smell terrible. <laughs> someone said from behind. Uh, someone said from behind them. Uh, they both turned, and Nightingale's eyes widened as she saw her sister's Shayless standing there. Nightingale was usually thrilled to see her, but today was different. Today, Shayless was one of the pro uh, proctors of the most important test of their new lives: the magical aptitude and skill test, or the mast for short. Makes me smell terrible, Zeke scoffed. See here, I was expecting something like. It's so good to see you, Zeke. Or maybe, how'd you do on your written exams? You know, friend stuff. No favoritism today, Shayla said. She sounded stern, but she was grinning at them as she flipped through a few pages on a worn clipboard. Oh, but look at that. Lucky you. Looks like you two ended up together. What a surprise. Nightingale smiled and shared a look with Zeke. Consider that the only luck you get today. Shayla's commented quietly. Nightingale looked around wondering who the, their other partners would be. Of course, she and Zeke would be in a group together. She knew why Shayla's didn't want to broadcast it, though. Other students would be quick to pick up on any nepotism. While Nightingale knew each of the students around them, the really short girl with multicolored eyes, the kid with the strange goat-like hooves instead of feet, none of them were actually friends. Rook? Uh, oh, God. Excuse me. Each team has four people, Zeke said. Who are the other two? Uh, Rook, Lars, and Remy Moretti. Shayla's frowned at the clipboard for a moment, then shrugged and tucked it away under one arm. Do you need me to point them out? Nah, we're good. Zeke rested one hand briefly on Nightingale's shoulder, pointing towards the single largest student in the room. I see Rook there. If you're not already, get acquainted. Acquainted. I've only got another few teams to assign before I explain everything. Shayless walked away, vanishing effortlessly into the crowd. Guess it makes sense. Rook's got to be the smartest student here, and the best fighter in our class, Zeke said. They started walking towards him, Nightingale leaving it to Zeke to clear a path for them. She lowered her voice so the other students couldn't hear her. Sure, Rook makes sense. Remy, though? Isn't her dad some kind of mafioso? Who thought it was a good idea to pair someone like that with royalty? Couldn't make it look like favoritism, I'd bet. So they picked us a boat anchor to balance out our shared awesomeness. Zeke shrugged. Every team has four. So long as she doesn't show us down, slow us down, we'll be fine. It looked like the other half of their team was already assembled. Rook was easily double the size of Nightingale, with hands like hammers and a beard like a lion. Hey, Zeke, Rook called. They met with a bone-cracking embrace. Remy stood just behind him, arms folded awkwardly in front of her. She looked up, smiling politely, and extended a hand. Hey, uh, I guess we're together for the test. Princess Nightingale, arson ma'am. Remy peered at Nightingale through impressive, multicolored dreadlocks. Her massive, owl-like wings folded behind her, making Remy's small frame look a little bigger. Just Nightingale. She corrected Remy, taking the offered hand. The title gets old quick. You're Remy, right? Yeah. Remy looked past her, up to the gigantic rook who was still talking with Zeke. I know I'm probably not the sort of teammate you were hoping for. Nightingale blushed, unable to meet her eyes. Had Remy somehow overheard her talking to Zeke on the way over? She didn't get a chance to respond because at that moment, her sister stepped up onto a raised platform at the edge of the hall and started shouting. All right. Listen up, everyone. They did. Welcome to the Magical Aptitude and Skill Test. If any of you have doubts about your ability to complete the mast, the door is right there. She gestured behind them all towards the towering double doors that led into the castle's main hall. A few stern teachers stood there, their armor polished, their weapons sharp. You will be required to go through the, a the Acerbus, the Academy's training dungeon. The Acerbus is the real deal. Don't think the force fields of the Bellicose Cubes make up for stupid mistakes, because they don't. These monsters will kill you if you're not careful. There were a few seconds of silence. Nobody left, and Chalice's expression grew more intense. 
All right, we're going to walk through the doors behind me to the armory. Each of you is entitled to one pack of supplies. Choose wisely. If you get halfway through this test before you realize you didn't bring something important, too bad. She paused, waiting for her statement to sink in. If you have any last questions, ask me, ask either me or another proctor before you get into the dungeon. Once the test starts, you will only get my help if things go very wrong. She raised her voice, glancing once around the room. For the sake of your grades, you do not want our help. There were no questions. Shayla's turn, hopping off the edge of the platform. Please follow me to the armory. Choose a starting pack, depending on your adventurer. So we all have our starting packs. We've got our adventurers. And we've lowered the air conditioning here so I don't sweat profusely. So those are the four characters that we all have. You guys are going to be playing as Nightingale. So that's your stuff. So this is your stuff. I don't even know what fell. I'm going to take this out. That's fine. No, oh, cool. Thanks. Um, all right. <coughs> The armory was well stocked, and none of them would go into their dungeon wa wanting. After selecting their gear, they made their way to an old freight lift that was operated with pulleys and ropes. There was only enough room on the lift for the four of them, and no pesky safety features like rails. A burly proctor nightingale, rec recognized as an archery instructor, stood just beside the lift. Oh, is this me also? Yeah. <laughs> Someone keep a hand on that rope at all times, he warned. If you let go... Fall will kill you. Got it, Rook answered. He was the first to climb aboard, taking hold of the control rope with one gigantic fist. The rest of them followed him aboard, and they started down. This is going to be awesome! Nightingale looked down at the firefly lights of the glowstones, illuminating the carved stone patterns on the dungeon below. Even if it's trial dungeon, it's about time we get out of the classroom. Zeke nodded. Is that me? Yeah, oh, that's yeah. me. Cool. I have so many colors. <laughs> I just can't wait to graduate. We're so close to becoming real citizens. No more lectures. No more exams. That's still me. Remy shuffled near the edge of the lift, her wings twitching a little in the slight breeze. Yeah. She said, her voice barely a squeak in the dark. Shalus was waiting at the bottom of the lift, in a cavernous room cut from rough stone. Several passages opened away in all directions. Down some of the tunnels, lights were trailing away, and voices were echoing as groups set out on their separate paths. Sorry, guys. You ready, little sis? Uh, you ready, little sis? Shayla's gestured down a dark hallway. That one's yours. I'm ready. Nightingale drew her weapon and raised it enthusiastically. Nothing down there stands a chance. Shayla's turn, oh, I'm sure it doesn't. Shayla smiled and reached out, wrapping one arm around Nightingale in a quick hug. Shayla's turned, meeting, uh, meeting each of their eyes slowly. Take care of each other. Your team shares one grade, so your citizenship depends on it. With a nod, she tugged on the rope, and at once the rickety elevator started to rise. Good luck. Zeke waved at her as she disappeared. He turned and headed towards the indicated pathway. His expression wilted as he got his first look of what waited for them. Damp stone, thick cobwebs, and the smell of decay. Uh, let's get this over with. They left the first room behind, the sound of squeaking metal pulleys fading into the distance. The stone was thick here, too thick to hear any of the other students might be doing. Soon enough, they were left with nothing but their own footsteps and the light of their glowstones. They didn't have far to go before they reached the first of the bellicose cubes. It was a small relic, only about a foot across, and set into the stone wall of the cavern. Intricate carvings of Kror magic pulsed with red light as they neared the basin at the front. I always hate using these things, though I guess they've kept me safe in a couple of sparring matches. Remy frowned down at the cube as she approached it. It's better than getting killed, Rook stated. I bet the proctors put them here so th <laughs> they have time to intervene if we if we're defeated but monsters by monsters or if we suffer an otherwise fatal fall just make sure to attune yourself with it without putting your in your blood it won't protect you is rook related to christopher walken 
maybe. <laughs> so I just want to pause real quick here. It says, tip, party composition. Ideally, each party contains at least one adventurer who can cast spells to get it by Harley highly armored targets. Reminder, restoring. When adventurers restore, they unflip and unexhaust all cards and remove all damage and other tokens. If an encounter continues without telling adventurers to restore, they keep all the cards and damage that they're, uh, the way, the way they, they were. were. Although they still remove any effect tokens. Defeated adventurers are returned to the board during the next encounter step, and all adventurers that have more than nine damage heal until they only have nine damage. There we go. Attuned or not, fighting will still hurt. Zeke added. I broke an arm while leaning, learning to use the sword. Guy cheap shot at me. Rook nodded in agreement. Zeke's right. I've broken other students' arms while learning to use a sword. <laughs> he smiled at Zeke and then got serious. <laughs> Seriously, though. The cube will let us survive very serious wounds, but it doesn't make us invulnerable. Don't be an idiot. Nightingale winced as she cut her hand along the blade of her weapon, just deep enough that a few drops welled up in her palm. Why do they always cut their palms? A few drops fell from her pale fingers into the bowl. One by one, they... Sh uh, they struck and boiled away, and the glow of the cube grew much brighter. For a moment, she felt as though all the blood in her body was being tugged towards the cube. The strange sensation passed, and she got out of the way. They all took their turns before they, final, uh, they could finally advance into the encroaching gloom. Continue to the mast, day one on page seven. Da, da, da! You have to go to the book map. So this is where we start our exam. So basically, to recap what's going on, is we're a bunch of students at a, a magical academy that's not on Earth. Um, I'll tell you citizenship later. Uh, and we're about to take our final exam. And our final exam is a real-life dungeon event. All righty. So. so the mast, day one, the damp, cold air of the cave chills you to the bone. As your eyes adjust to the dark, you see the faint outline of a large rock blocking the path up ahead. Uh, it looks as if a strong push could send the boulder careening into the pits on either side of it. In any case, it looks like only uh, the only way forward. So, uh, we've got everything set up there. So, special encounter rules, movable rock. So, Anne points to movable rock, please. So, this is the movable rock here. This is all her stuff. All right, so an adventurer adjacent to the obstructing terrain token, uh, so that is the uh, on tile UM1. Right, so this is tile UM1. Yeah. So it's talking about this is the obstruction, so they're talking about adjacent, so here. All right, uh, may, take, may make an encounter action to make a strength 10 skill check. If they pass, they may move the obstructing terrain token onto an adjacent unoccupied space. If the space the token is moved onto is dangerous terrain, discard it. All right, so do you want me to go over the grading rules or no? Um, yeah. Okay, so during this encounter of the mast, you'll be graded on how many rounds it took you to finish the encounter and how many opponents you defeated. Use time tokens to keep track of how many rounds have passed. At the end of the encounter, consult the chart below to determine your score. Keep track of this score using the notes section on the adventure sheet. Your score for each encounter can never fall below zero. So end conditions is uh, when an adventurer ends their turn on the blue exit. Lose condition, so we're all defeated. The blue exit token is all the way over here. Okay. So that's how we get there. Uh, it discusses the movable rock, but there's also, which I don't discuss just yet, uh, there's a blue loot token here, and then there's a red idol here and a blue idol here, and these are all interactive. So if there's also a white idol, can we combine them and make it an American idol? Um... Why are we trying to watch American Idol? Th that's the that's joke. That's a joke. Oh, it's my phone. Yeah, it was your phone. So I was more excited when it was Matt's. I need this. Okay, thanks. Uh, we eventually used Remy's fly. Yeah. Yeah, so when we were talking about fly, one of the nice things for this particular setup is that this is a chasm. And as you can see, it's connected. You can't walk on here. So the only <laughs> way to get over the chasm is to get use Remy to get over there. I so believe it's pronounced chasm. So, no, Matt must jump. We're going to throw him like a baby. Uh, do you want to discuss movement rules? Uh, let's go over the... Uh, That's a cool idea. Which way do you want to do it? Uh, the adventure turn first. Okay. So, and ooh, that ooh. is glary. Hello, light. Um, Why is it so glary? Because we moved the light. I'll just feed it up. So, adventure's turn. Uh, one, start of the turn. Start of turn phase. Resolve abilities and effects that occur at the start of a turn in the following order. Resolve special encounter rules. Resolve abilities the adventure controls. Resolve abilities other allies control. 
and resolve abilities opponents control. Number two, status phase. Any abilities or effects that have the status condition tag occur now. Three, refresh phase. The adventurer goes through the following steps during this phase. Recover stamina points and unexhaust cards. Action phase. Adventurers may spend as many stamina points as they'd like to use actions and abilities. When they decide they no longer want to spend SP, which stamina. are stamina points, make actions or use abilities, the adventure continues to the end phase. And then finally, the end phase. Resolve abilities and effects that occur at the end of a turn in the following order. Resolve special encounter rules. Resolve abilities the adventurer controls. Resolve abilities the other allies control. And then finally, resolve abilities the opponents control. Standard actions. And then we got the standard actions. So one, move. Move up to your maximum movement value. So in this case, for Nightingale, your maximum movement value is seven. Uh, so I've got six. You got seven. Josh has five. Yeah, he goes nowhere. Uh, so move, uh, move up to the maximum value. For each additional stamina point spent, add two to your movement value. Important. Adventures are limited to one move action per turn. So you can't, you can't split up a move. Gotcha. So two, attack. Make an attack against a figure using the combat dice of your equipped weapon. So. On the bottom of the weapon, it shows the combat dice? Or on the top of the weapon? Where does it show it? So, uh, top. Um, so yeah. up here, so I'll be rolling a purple die? Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. But you're and attacking with both swords, so you'd be attacking with two purple dice. So do you want to, let's put this over up here real quick while we're talking about weapons. So on the top left, 18 gold, it has one purple die, it is one-handed, and it's a stabby-stabby. It's not a range. All right, and then we've got exhaust abilities, so I can exhaust this card to move one space diagonally. That's really cool. Uh, and then there's a combo, so what does the combo mean? So there's a keyword on there, and in, <laughs> <laughs> and in this one, the keyword is light. Okay. So if you have another item that has that keyword of light in it... Like this other sword? Mm -hmm, you combo them together. So when you exhaust, you get to re-roll one of your combat dice. Perfect. And then what is this finesse white? That one I don't remember. You can do it. Uh, finesse is a keyword, and... I don't recall what it is. We also use the term stabby stab. Uh, chat's probably going to help us out here stabby for a couple questions because they probably know the rules better than us. I mean Some I of them do. I've never played. Uh, so next up, we've got... Uh, upgrades one of your dice from... Pur oh, that's right. Up upgrades one of your dice from purple to white. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. So uh, we've got encounter Real action. So why, why, why does this have a one and this one has a two? It costs two stamina points. To, to do, do that, that. Yep. And those stamina points, are again, are the uh, circles. Gotcha. Uh, so then encounter action. Encounter actions are encounter-specific actions that an adventurer may take, like activating loot tokens. And then one uh, for re-equip. So equip or unequip any items in your pack or on your adventure. You may also take items from other adjacent allies, but you may never give items to other allies. All right. Uh, so then we've got standard abilities. Number one, dodge. So it costs one stamina point. Mm -hmm. During the dodge step of an attack, roll the black die, add plus one to defense for each shield icon rolled. If the skull is rolled, no defense is added. That's the worst face on all the dies. All of them. Dice. Uh, one stamina point for empower. When rolling to hit with an attack or determining a spell's force, add a black die to the roll. If the skull is rolled during an attack, the attack misses. If the skull is rolled during a spell, the spell fails to affect the target. The caster is dealt three magic damage, and the spell action ends. And then finally, two stamina points for counter. During the counter step of an attack, if the attack missed or dealt zero final damage, the target may make an attack against the attacker. Ooh. Okay. So don't miss. Be good. I like... Okay, so when we talk about games, I like that the quick reference guide is double-sided and like that there's words. <laughs> LOL, you've given chat Nightingale, who auto-rolls the black when casting and will kill herself. LOL, LOL, LOL. That's who yep. I played. Yep. Magic missile, basically. I played Remy and Nightingale. Do you want a medal? Yeah. Okay, cool. And a cookie, too. Uh, how about a medal shaped like a cookie? I can't eat it. What if it's Can a Can I get a cookie shaped like a medal? That's dumb. All right, so... Um, what do we need to do now, Josh? So we're all going to start with three stamina. Jesus. It's very loud. <laughs> so uh, there's stamina tokens that say one through three on it. I find it just easier to slide them up and down the track <laughs> than just giving yourself tokens back and forth. I agree. Okay. Um, and uh, each round, not the first round, but each forward going forward round, uh, you're, you're going to get three stamina at the beginning of your turn um, to a max of five. Uh, so that's how many points you get. You can have up to five points, but we're all going to start with three. Okay. Uh, and then we need to do initiative. 
Though I think this is a bench around, so I don't know if initiative matters so much. I don't. Wait, there's no monsters on the board to do initiative with, though. Uh, our player turn order. Oh. Unless chat has that wrong. Unless chat has that I wrong? I want chat corrects me. <laughs> Are you asking Crimson Sun specifically to please um, help you? Because um, if that's what you're trying to ask, this is where we use our words. Silence. So. Okay. Put the initiative down. <laughs> so Zeke goes first. Okay. That's so me. There's a deck of cards. It, you use initiative even in the adventure mode before those monsters, right? Crimson? Why do you make that? Yes. Okay. Yes, thank you. Irregardlessly. Um, I don't know what to do, so coach me through what I should be looking at here. Um, there's not. We need to move that rock. Okay. I feel like you're the And we want to go one. activate stuff. So you so should do that. What stuff is there to activate where I'm at right now? So I guess nothing. I so we're we're all the way over here, and what we're trying to do, like the first thing we need to do, is we need to get through the rock and then get to the stuff on the other side. So I should just walk closer to said rock. I'm probably not gonna be the one pushing it. So uh, pause. Did you explain how initiative is done? Nope. It's a deck of cards. You shuffle it up and you deal it out. And as <laughs> monsters come in, you'll shuffle them into the deck and deal them out. So does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. I figured that after I saw him doing it. I just wanted to bag on, on a, bag on him a little. So um, don't forget that you will get in line of sight of the totem before you reach the movable rock. But don't you need to interact with the totem to activate it? And like you have wrong. to feel be adjacent to it to activate it? I feel like you're metagaming. I think right we might have done that wrong. I think it is line of sight. You have to oh, the totem. it's line of sight. Yep. As soon as so you get to the edge of UM11, line of sight activates a totem. Yep. Is a totem a good thing or a bad thing? You'll uh, see. It's in the You'll book. You'll see. And You'll you have to see. use the secret decoder to read it. Okay. But th that's all I'm saying. Where's the totem? Uh, there's a totem there. Oh, and there's okay. a totem over there. Okay. So I have a movement of uh, looking at my six, right? Yep, six. Yeah. Oh, it's on, it's on the, the TV. Yeah. Uh, so movement of six. So is there anything else that I can spend my stamina points on this turn or not really? Uh, Not really. So I can move six spaces closer. Orthogonally, not diagonally, right? Where I can't see. Four, five, six. Here? Mm hmm All right. So Is that puts him in line of sight now. Yep. Over the castle. So it's edge to edge with line of sight? Uh, corner to corner. Corner to corner. I believe. You never explained that either. Sorry. Is there a different... Uh, center I'm not to center. Oh, okay. Yeah. You center, to center of tile to center of tile versus... Corner of tile to corner of tile. I didn't realize it was a t I didn't. Yeah. Know. So, blue totem? So yeah. Middle to middle. Oh middle to middle. Yeah. So, you're right. Center to center. Thank not you. Not corner to corner. All right. But, yes, blue. And it's Is that center to center line? Yeah, because it's, it's a chasm. There's no wall oh, there. Oh, oh, okay. It's a hole in the ground. Okay. I was thinking that it was a raised surface. Yep. Uh, as you approach the boulder in your path, a scurrying sound echoes from the other side of the chasm. <laughs> Spawn two cave sickles. Is that like a popsicle? Yeah, but not. It's going to kill you. Uh, on any normal terrain space adjacent to the blue totem. Your heart sinks as you hear skittering coming from behind you as well. You whirl around and find yourself facing two more cave sickles. Spawn two cave sickles on any unoccupied ter normal terrain space on the south side. South side of tile UM11. So this is the cave sickle. Look at he looks like a puppy dog. Tasty, tasty cave skulls. <laughs> What's really funny was I was watching Stargate last night and the uh, the um, replicators were on, so that's the noise that I thought in my head. Uh, so cave skulls. Yeah. So sickle anatomy. The cave sickle has immunity poison and movement point cost is not increased by terrain or allies. Yes. So he they free move around. Yeah, but this this part sucks. Hive mind. The cave sickles combat dice and defense change depending on how many other cave sickles are in are within sphere of influence. Sphere of influence. So mm -hmm. how wide is the sphere of influence? I believe it's four. Chat, please correct me if I'm wrong. Diagonally or orthogonally? Uh, orthogonally, I believe. Four. Uh, is there an opponent adjacent? So make an attack against an opponent within uh, with the most damage. F you. Uh, make <laughs> follow up, but it does. It's so okay. good. I laughed every uh, time. Make an attack against the same target. This follow up attack has F you. <laughs> make an attack against the same target. Is there opponent within range four? So that's if there's no one adjacent. Right. Then range. Yeah. So make a ranged attack. Then move to be adjacent to the opponent with the most damage within movement range. Then make an F you attack. 
Inflict poison and force nine. What's force nine? Shove you back. It uh, knock back nine. Yeah. I think. Okay. Pretty sure. <coughs> All right. I like how your face is in the thing. Uh, you. Can it move and attack an opponent within range four? So if there's no one currently within range four, but it can move and get to someone within range four, uh, is move to be up to range four from the nearest opponent, then make a range, range four attack. Yep. No F you on that one. Uh, no. Force is a conviction check to see if you get the uh, the poison. I'm sorry, a what check? A conviction. Oh. So that goes back to your card with the two purple die. Okay. <coughs> uh, but bam. So conviction. Oh, so I rolled two purple die to see if I get poison there. Yeah. Okay. I thought Josh had a convection check, and I'm like, are, he we, did. are we eating, like, heating something up in yes. the oven? So you, we have to roll the black die for uh, initiative is what Crimson said. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, so have chat roll black die, please. Just one? Yep. We've got two, though. Capesicles. Oh, do they go together? Because they're one through three, and then four through six go together? Yep. Okay. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, so look at this really cool thing. So on... Um, I don't know. So on the Capesicle card, you see where it says 1, 2, and 3? Yep. You see how it's red, purple, and yellow? Yep. The game actually <laughs> comes, like I know we have those, but the game comes with little uh, bands, so it tells you which numbers, and they come in groups. Like there's a second card for Capesicles 4, 5, and 6. So teal, green, that's supposed to be green, yeah. FYI for 5, and then pink. Bright pink. Okay. Yeah. So they lump together. You get loot only when you finish off all from one card. Isn't there two groups or is that the next totem? Spoilers. Spoilers. It's, there's two groups because we summoned four. Yeah. Two in front and two behind. Oh, I didn't see that you gave me the other two. Yep. Okay, so this is... You're not going to be able to see them. Okay, so... Where do they go? How does... I rolled a... They rolled a four? On they the rolled four die? books. Four... Okay. Right? Oh, so we should probably go over that. Here's the black die so that you can have it. Yeah, they rolled four books. Because all you showed me before is a skull. So yep. this has four books, two shields, two books, four shields, um, fat fingers, three books and a shield, three shields and a book. So what are the books? Uh, book is each position that it's going to go down the initiative. So it's going to have four. One, two, three, four. If I have that right. So it's so going to go behind Rook. Yeah. But we need another black die to get the other group of initiative. So we did need two. Hopefully another four. Four books. And I believe it so starts book after Zeke. Books are the only thing that matter right now? Yes. What if they're old skull? They go first. Uh, it goes right wherever. So two. Finish One, your two. words. It goes right where behind the person that's currently active. Okay. Uh, skulls before Zeke. Goes first. So, so what is I it said. Go there or does it go after Remy? It's two books. One, two. One, two, three, four, and then it went. So one, two, and then it goes. So it'd be in front of Nightingale. I think what Josh was saying is, it should it go two after the current player? Is it after the current player, or is it from the front? Is the question. So a skull would essentially make the monster go last, then. Correct. Yeah. I think from the front. I think it's from the front. Okay. So then it comes before Nightingale. That's fine. <coughs> All right. So I only move. I still have stuff to do then, right? Uh, you moved. You had three stamina points. You need to go down the stamina track one because you moved. Oh, we need to put the uh, monsters on the board. Yeah. yeah, I don't know what that means. Where to put them? What, is the m what does the thing say? You need your magic reader. Your magical decoder. I told you already. Uh, spawn two cavesicles on any normal terrain space adjacent to the blue totem. Yeah. And then spawn two cave sickles on any unoccupied normal terrain space on the south side of tile UM11. Okay, so this is the south side, I think, because I think that's north. South. Oh, yeah. north would be us. South would be the other side. How did you put it in the book? Correct. It's we're facing north. We're no, 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 no. You and this I. This. That's north. We right. are. You and I so are north, facing right. north. Right. Not our okay. characters. Yeah. We are physically facing north. Okay. So you didn't put the board upside down. Correct. No. Okay. That's fine. Is it fine? Do we have your approval? No. Nope. It's gone now. I took it away. <laughs> no more approval. <laughs> All right. So what now? Uh, I can fight? Can I, can I beat up yeah, the Yeah, you can beat it up. But it's diagonal from me, correct? Where? I can't see. I can't tell because Anne kind of bridged two spaces with it. Um, no. She put it there. Thank you. Um, you can. 
So can I believe you can attack s diagonal still. Are you sure? I'm not 100% sure. Chat will. So how do I how do I use my weapon? Yeah, you can attack diagonally. Uh, so you use your weapon. You it's two AP. It costs you two AP. SP. What are SP. A, what are AP? Stamina SP, points. Sorry. Stamina okay. points. So you have two left. So I have to use both of them to make a singular attack. Yes. Yeah, okay. So here is the standard action. So the second one is attack two stamina points. Make an attack against the figure using the combat dice of your equipped weapon. All right. So I spend my two. So I'm at zero then. Okay. Green screen map. And yep. so I. I g it activates both weapons, though? Yep. Okay, so That's I roll two time. purple dice. You're going to roll two white dice because you had the finesse. Finesse. Finesse yeah. keyword, don't I you? I want to say finesse. Uh, so I roll two white dice. Yep. Here you go. Thanks, pal. You're welcome, buddy friend. Uh, so I rolled a... Oh, I don't know what I Put rolled it here. In there. So I rolled a two on that one. That's a number. That's easy for me. This one is a six, a book, and two shields. Okay. So you rolled a total of eight. Okay. So when you look at the cape of sickle... All right, so Cavesicle. And what is their defense? Defense is eight. Defense is eight. Uh, now I forget if ties. Attacker. I think attacker wins on ties. But right now you're not doing any damage. So the damage you do is how much you beat the defense by. Okay. Um, so the other thing to look at is you have... So I didn't do anything. You have two shields and a book. Okay. Two shields give you plus two physical damage with your weapon. Attacker oh. wins on a tie. Okay, so, so you do two damage to. What does book do? Uh, look at look at your card, your sword card. Oh, see, at the bottom has the two shields. Two shields plus two physical damage. A star equals one physical damage. Book do nothing. Books do nothing. Please. Okay, cool. So so I do two damage to it. Yes, and it's got a health of six. So it's down to four health. Yep. Oh, you don't have the monster on the overlay. No, monsters are not on the overlay. Hmm. So what I could also do though. And hear so me out here. Just hold on, Josh. Yeah. So could I possibly exhaust one of these swords then and then re-roll the, the number two die? Yes, you could. And that's the worst result you can get on that die. So, Cool. So I'm going to do that. And then let's see how... I rolled another six and two shields. So I think I exploded the cave sickle. All right. So you're at 12. It had a defense of eight. So does that double stack the two shields also? I yes. believe so, yes. So that would be plus another four. Yes. Yeah. So 16 total damage. It had a defensive eight and a health of six. So Does it have any arm, uh, armor? You didn't ask me that before. Um, no. Yes. Zero. Okay. It has, yes, zero armor. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, yeah, uh, you would kill it. So then this one goes like this. you got to make the sound effect, Matt. Pew. Oh, how many? Uh, yeah, does it have defense? Yeah, stacking of symbols affects sickles are within four. How many sickles are within four? Two. Uh, just the one. Two. Wait, what's the question here? How many sickles are in the sphere of influence? Combat dice and defense change. Oh, th it's yeah. only two. So, okay, so this is what you're talking about. Yeah. They get tougher if they're more. Okay, so you see how there's one cave for yeah. the. If they roll on their attack, they roll a white and an orange die. Yeah. If there's two of them together, two they orange. roll two orange dice. If you get up to three, they get an additional uh, thingy defense. And if then if you get four, they have two additional defense. So, because those other two were out of range. Yeah, because the sphere of influence is four. There was only one within one, the sphere of influence, two, so there's two total, so you didn't get any defensive corner corner. boost. Yeah. Right, so like one, whatever. Doesn't yeah, count. But yeah, not with Okay. Damage. Cool. So one of them is dead. The blue one. Okay. And now those can go back. He blew himself. You can have that one. So, Matt, you still have more actions you can do. How? Um, you could exhaust your other sword. And move one diagonally? And move to the other six. And then use your uh, special ability. It's my special ability. If you have two one-handed weapons equipped, make an attack. Oh. How do you have that special ability? So I have this Blade Works skill? Is this called a skill? Yeah. Okay. So I can exhaust this. If you have two one-handed weapons equipped, make an attack. So if I exhaust my other sword, I'm going to move diagonally towards that other cave sickle. And I want to make a clarification that got brought up, and it was, it was very correct that I misspoke. 
This is how many other are in the sphere of influence. Oh, okay. Um, right? Because this is their regular combat dice. Gotcha. So that's the upgraded one if there's like a team of two together. Cool. All right, so I'm going to, uh, it's called a discipline. So I'm going to use my discipline of blade works and I'm going to move diagonally towards that other cave sickle. Oh, you're going to use your sword to move diagonal. Yeah. Uh, and then you're going to attack with your discipline. Yes, sorry, correct. Uh, so then I'm going to exhaust this, and so then I rolled my two white die again. Yep. So I rolled a four and a six with three sh shields, so that it's ten plus another two, so that's twelve. He has eight armor, not eight armor, eight defense yes. plus six health, so he's got 14 total, so he's got two health left. Did I do that right? You did four damage. So yes. And can you put uh, four damage on him? And that's the orange one. All Kay. right. Cool. Math checks out. I like it. Uh, Matt, green screen, please. So aggressive, Joshua. But the books do not count to determine if you hit, right? Yeah, only no. for... The books don't do anything for damage either. Not for you. Not for me. All right. So it's going to go to Remy now. Hi. How are you? That's you. Okay. So Remy... Can we just look at Remy's mini for a second? One Mississippi. It's got giant wings. And, like, the mini doesn't really sit down nicely because I'm... Okay, anyway, here we go. Um, I want to go one, two... I have a movement of seven. One, two, three, four, five. Can you attack diagonally? We just said yes, didn't we? Six. So I should probably come help and you. Chats, right? It's your base roll is to see if you beat their defense. The extra damage you do is how much damage you do if you beat their defense on your roll numbers. Make sense, Matt? Huh? No. So if its defense is eight, the two numbers you need to roll together on your die need to be an eight. Three, four, if you roll a six and you had two shields and you're plus two damage, they don't count it doesn't count. Defense? Okay, yes. cool. Is, is oh, what, yeah, yeah, what yeah. chat's saying. You, ha you have to beat it with the roll before you can add the bonus. So that's just a pure books. damage modifier. Yes. Not yes. Gotcha. Not, a, not a see if your attack hit modifier. Gotcha. Look at the cool weapon I have. And my axe. So this is a two-hander. You roll two white dice. You also have the exhaust ability. When determining damage, this weapon gains a book plus one physical damage until the attack is resolved. So if you roll a bunch of books, then you can exhaust this and Where's gain your that. Skill card? For each shield you roll, you're going to gain a physical damage. And for each star you roll, you're going to gain a physical damage. So I have Hammer Helm, which is my discipline. All right. And so thanks for stopping by, Crimson Sun. Thank you. Um... So Hammer Helm, it is passive. Your attack gains plus one physical damage, so you automatically gain a damage. Physical damage. Yes, and then exhaust. When making a uh, melee attack, if you have a two-handed weapon equipped, which you do, you may re-roll any dice in your combat dice pool. So you get some re-roll there for an exhaust. So does the exhaust this exhaust uh, redoes on the next round, right? Yeah, exhaust comes back up to me. It's so I can per use round. this Exhaust time. redoes on next uh, round. Uh -huh. Good English. So you're using all your stamina because you moved and then you're using two for attack. My yes. move is one. Oh, yeah. So yes. 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 One plus two is three. Is it? Mm -hmm. Are you sure? I know it's hard for an accountant. Mm. Okay, so I have two white die on my attack die. I rolled an eight. It's got two shields. That was kind of poopy. Um, Each shield is one physical damage, right? It is, and if I and my passive is plus one physical damage. So, so you rolled eight, so you beat the three, defense. Right, and the, I beat the defense because it was an eight. And then you do three damage to it. Right, uh, which is enough to kill it, so I'm not even going to, right? Because four, and it has a health three of six. Three is more than two. It has yeah. two health left, yes. Three I is more than two. I was trying to figure out how much health it has left. Okay, so I don't even need to do anything else. You know, I killed one all by myself. Me too. All right. Uh, that was after I, I, so I tenderized you. The four first. through six cave sickle group is now dead. Why are you cutting off Matt and I's spiel? Because I hate you guys. Really? This is why no one wants to play games with me, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, I put the wrong cave sickle guys in the thing because this should be in this one. Okay, hold on. Um, it doesn't matter. It's really. fine. Don't don't worry about it. But I want to make the purple one the And color I'm going to murder you. Okay, go ahead. I don't want the purple one. Okay, go. It's all better. Do it's better. That's not purple. That's green. Yeah. It's supposed to be one and two. Green it's and red. Whatever. It doesn't matter. I had the right one. You just... Okay. So it is now going to go to Nightingale's turn. So it's actually Twitch's turn now. Yes. So guys in chat, let us know what you would like to do. That's your purple character down there. Um, so you can... 
we we went over the actions before, but just shout it out in chat. Uh, what what you want to do? Loot cards since the group quote unquote is dead. Oh, I don't remember that part. Okay, I'll look for that in a minute. You guys work on that. Uh, so the thing is, uh, Nightingale can't do any melee attacks. Can you put her back on the board, please. So you guys can magic something. So show off their magic card. So she can do. She's got the long sword. There's nothing close enough to melee attack. Oh yeah, that's right. They're behind a rock. So what do they <laughs> magic something? What is what's the magic card? So show them their discipline card. So this is core shot. Okay. So there is core shot. A uh, gore shot. Sorry, which is a cast a spell six. I don't know what that means. Um. <sighs> Okay, so while she's figuring that out, if successful, deal two magic damage. You may make one irreducible damage to deal additional magic damage equal to your highest level core discipline. Movement for Nightingale 7. And for those of you just joining us, if you are interested in what Nightingale stats are, if you look in the top left corner of your screen, you'll see the health 14, defense 10, movement 7, armor is 0. So that's for you guys. What spell 6 mean? I'm pretty sure that means that your spell is successful if you beat a check of six, but I'm not a thousand percent sure. What do they roll? Uh, she rolls the casting die, which I think is a purple die. Yeah. I think that that's what it is. Cast casting and a black die. Casting and a black. Oh, uh, because she auto rolls the black die, but she auto rolls the black die because I thought it was the talisman, which is why. I think it's her character itself. Yes. Uh, per encounter. Uh, no, maybe I don't know. Um, you casting guys have played upgraded this when uh, making an attack or casting a spell that targets an impot yeah it's the empower okay so that's her talisman and Crimson says you make a casting white die plus, plus black a black and, and add six, add six. Yeah, yeah oh that it's a bonus S for six yeah spell so you see in passive casting upgrade white so okay. instead of casting with purple, the purple die, which is on white. her card, it's an upgrade to the white die. So but then when making an attack or casting a spell that targets an opponent, you do empower. And empower means you have to roll this black die along so with it. So it's a potential boon, but a potential bust with the skull. Because you hit yourself yeah. if you bust. So this basically gives you whatever you roll plus six for yep. the damage on it. Empower is the worst if you hit a thing. Is that correct? Yes. yes. Okay. And then each book you roll in the black die gives you a plus one. What's the range on this magic attack? I didn't think there was range on it. To be uh, I think they need line of sight. Yes. It's, uh, I think it's SOI. So Spirit it's within influence. four. Well, first I guess we should move to try and get in line of sight of the enemies. Yeah. So. They'll be spending one, two, two of their three, four, stamina. Five, six, seven. One of their stamina. So that would put you here. And that would give them line of sight on red. And purple. Oh, I'm sorry. No, n not red because of the boulder. The rock. Oh, yeah. They purple. Purple one. Yeah. So it is line of sight we've confirmed, have yep. we? Okay. So they would cast this. Range is SOI, and you can multicast freely. Purple should be, but not red. Perfect. So then it's going to take them two. Is it one or two stamina? Just one stamina, because you look at the side of the card, it shows how much stamina oh, it uses. Oh, that's cool. So they're going to use one stamina, so they're down to one stamina left. And then they would roll a white, a, a white and, and a, a black, black. black. And then it adds six to that. Yeah. Uh, then we're going to need the Casicle to roll their Conviction dice, because that's what they're going to be going up against. Yes. Where, what's the so here, if you look in the bottom left corner, sorry, I'm going to cover up Gorshaw for a second. These are your conviction dice. So two this purple. is the magic defense. So it's two purple. And they rolled a skull. So does it matter? What does that mean? <laughs> they do three damage to themselves. Yeah. Because the spell blew up in their face. I, I am, am so, so sorry. Scalded. <laughs> it. So it's because Crimson Sun put it out in the universe. You're not supposed to do that yet. You but does that mean it. they could do it again because it only cost one SP? Yep. Yeah. I have a feeling they, they should do it again. No? Yeah. You gonna try it again? I mean, you're at 11 health. Yeah! Yes, you can! Yeah! Do it! Do it! Do it! <laughs> Three more damage. <laughs> <laughs> Shh. Why'd you put a purple die in there? Because it's for the conviction. Jost asked me to roll it for the other guy. Oh. 
Yeah, as long as it doesn't blow up. Scared. I should have reset before I requested these. Yeah. They rolled well. four books. They rolled a seven. This is good. And they rolled a three for the one purple and a three for the other purple. So th they they win. Why? What's because, the conviction? Uh, th their total conviction six. Right. Yeah. The spell is a six anyway, so it's six plus seven plus four books. Okay. So you you beat the hell out of it. So Why do you get the plus four books? So hold on, hold on. So yeah. the six for the c the conviction is essentially your defense against magic. Yes. Right. Cool. So that doesn't get modified by anything. It's just your dice roll. Right. Yes. Cool. So they rolled a bunch of stuff, and where's their? That's you the have talisman it in your hand. Um. So you want the gore shot and the top. You want both of those. All right. So then why why are we adding books, Josh? So look at the here. Oh, oh, sorry. Bottom of it says books plus one damage. Right. So for every two books, it's plus one damage. So since we rolled one book and two shields. Oh, because we rolled four books on the black one. So yeah. we have uh, two mu more magic damage. Okay. So six of so them, they rolled. Uh, no damage. Bon oh, empowered. No damage bonus from the books. Yeah. Spells is just your damage? Mm -hmm. We th think we played that wrong. Uh, I think so the books just, each book you rolled increases your empowered range. Oh. All right. So how much, dam range. how much damage do they do? Just two. That's what the spell does. It does two damage. Oh. Where do you see that? Uh, on the gore shot. If successful, oh, deal, deal two, two magic, magic damage. damage. Okay. You may take uh. one irreducible damage to deal additional magic damage equal to your highest level core discipline. Definitely think we played that wrong. I have a feeling that's not what it's up there. Okay. Your hit rolls increase, not your damage. Cool. So they're out of stamina now. Yeah, they're they're tired. And this means that it is your turn, Josh. Okay. Um, I'm just going to start walking over to that rock because i got to move that out of the way. All five movement points. Well, he could spend additional SP to move how more. How, how much farther... Is the rock? Uh, do you have to spend extra to move through friendlies? No. One, I two, just can't end your turn on three, friendly. four, five. Roll that boulder. Um, I, since it's exactly five, I'm just I'm just gonna use the one. I'm not gonna go further. Um, that's gonna be the end of my turn. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he just sits there and trudges along. Rook He's is the best. He really is you. Uh. Everyone else him. handles everything else, and you're just like moping forward. Like, mm -hmm. Thank you. It looks good. I'll take that. Good enough. I took you guys so long. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now it is going to be the Cavesicles' turn. Yes. So how do they go? Uh, you read the text before. It, it's read the text and write so on the line. Give me attitude, Josh. Uh, so the cave. So there's no one adjacent to him. Yep. Is there anyone within four of the Cavesicles? Do you want to put it in the thing so no, we can all read together? I don't. I'm going to share it with the class. Uh, there's no one adjacent. Is there anyone within range four? Uh, one, two, three, yes. All right, so that's for the purple one. Do they have a specific order that they go in, Josh? Um, th it would go from red to purple. So is the there number oh, on, on the top? Oh, thank you. So is there anyone uh, in range four of red? No. So then, can it move and make an attack of up to range four? No. No. So it doesn't do anything. Yeah. He goes. <laughs> he chitters. All right, so um, saying yes, Nightingale is, but I thought for the just for pur just, just for, the for purple. purple, not not for it can, it can jump. jump. Oh, I didn't know that. Red can jump the chasm. So it's gonna evil can evil the chasm. Wait, how do you tell <laughs> that it can jump though? Or is, it, is it on the text saying it moves? There are specific rules for it. Josh. That's in the book? Oh, okay. I didn't know it. Because it'll surely kill stuff. So one, two, three, four. Roll a black die for each square on a skull it dies. <gasps> Only we'll jump two. Okay. So it's got to roll two black die. Crimson, I'm so happy you enjoyed Ness today. Very much so. So guys, roll those black dice, and let's see... A skull. Let's see if he falls to his skull, death. Please. This is where we would like the skulls. One. That's not a skull. That's a skull! skull. Yay! Yay! Cave skull, go splat, go boom, die. One, two, three. Does that count for a kill for us, though? I don't know. For our score? Does it, Josh? 
You've got the rule book. No, th- th- I have the rule book. I'm the best roller. No. Um, because it killed itself. Okay. Who's got the rule book? Uh, Crimson Sun says, "Yeah, you get the loot. Oh. You get the loot, but do we do we get the 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 point for killing it? I don't. It's know. It's part of the grading at the end. <coughs> okay, so now. Yes, they say. Um, this one. Is it gonna jump? Does to do does to do the this? Well, uh, hold yeah. Oh my god, you couldn't let me do it, Jesus, man. Uh, so it's gonna make a ranged attack. Is there an opponent adjacent? No. no. So it's gonna make a ranged attack. Yeah. So is there someone within range four? Yes. Yes. So it's gonna roll two white two dice. white dice because there's nothing else in the sphere of influence right now. So we're gonna roll two white dice, and how do we know if it hits? <laughs> Dudes, I'm so just like when you were attacking, it's what they roll matches or is greater than her defense. And so it's gonna be Nightingale is who it's going against. I should have yes. cleared that. I always forget to clear it. So they rolled a five, and they rolled a six. So it's an eleven, which is higher than uh, ten. Yep. Kay. So it's gonna do one damage. Um, do they right. have any other stat bonuses? Um, not that I see Smaller here. All at the bottom. Oh, a shield is plus one physical damage. Okay. So they rolled one, two, three shields. So that's gonna be four damage. Okay. So Nightingale takes four damage. That's you. That's you, Josh. Okay. You have to do something now. Yeah. <laughs> Did you do the loot card? Yeah, the loot card's right there. So how does the loot card work? Uh, we just take the top card off the deck when we kill a group. So that's um, the loot card that we got from the first group. Dun, 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 dun. Six gold. All right. Um, Should have dodged for free. Uh, I don't think Nightingale has a dodge, though, right? They all have dodge standard ability. But it's a it's a SP to do it. Oh, yeah, she's out of it. Yeah, Nightingale's out of SP. All right. So, oh, armor. Do you have any armor? I don't think she does. No. No. No armor. No armor. Yeah, no armor. You can always dodge as long as you have SP. Her armor. Yeah, but she doesn't have armor. Does her? Does the shirt give a dodge ability, or does? does it oh no, no, the shirt's zero. Yeah, but the shirt can exhaust oh, for dodge. Oh, you can exhaust for dodge. Yep. So what does that do? Uh, dodge lets you. If roll the attack the deals no damage on exhaust's card encounter. Dodge lets you roll the black die for more defense. What does it say on the card? It it doesn't. Oh. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's dodge. I'm just uh, roll a black shield adds defense. Yep. Okay, so then let's exhaust the shirt. <laughs> All right, so roll that black die. Thank you, Crimson Sun. Roll that beautiful black die footage. It's like bean footage. No, that's gross. Why would you say that? And. They rolled three shields. So they're going to get one damage. One damage. That's pretty good. Yeah. It's a lot better than four. Yep. One's less than four. Are you sure? Yeah. Uh, in future, it needs to be done prior to the attack. No damage. Ah. Ah, gotcha. Okay. So. Didn't oh, hit. Now we learned. No damage didn't hit. Yeah, it didn't hit because. Um, because why? Oh, the. It. The shields add to your defense, and the Her defense three of the is ten. three of the damage that was done was for post hit. Oh, gotcha, yeah. gotcha, 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 gotcha. Gotcha. Okay, we cheated. In case you're wonder, anybody's wondering, that was definitely blatant, bold faced learning level. Cheating. Someone up the cheat counter! Exclamation mark! Cheat. Is that a thing? Yeah, yeah. it's from Ma- KDM, really. Uh, wh- what what does the case of do next? Uh, the Cavesicle is then going to move to be adjacent to the opponent with the most damage within movement range. You're so rude. We so were talking they're about going cheating. Anne's rude because she's jumping over me and talking now. So we're going to go ahead and uh, you're, you're learning. This is school. It's all good. <laughs> uh, so they're going to try to jump that, that chasm now, right? Chasm. 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 Evil can evil it. Uh, Aether Burns says counter from shirt, question mark. Uh, the shirt gets to... Uh, you can't counter because it's not adjacent. They successfully jumped the chasm. 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 What do you mean by the counter? So you, on exhaust, so you can use it again since you didn't take damage, but you can counter, which means you can attack back. Oh, so, so, so if no damage was done, then you can counter. Mm-hmm. Cool. So then I get to put it straight up. Bang. All right. So... Um, so he jumped two spaces. Does he still have two spaces of movement then? Yep. So he's going to move adjacent to Nightingale. And he's going to attack, right? 
then yes, he's going to make an FU attack and inflict poison on Force 9. So FU attack, he's going to roll two white dice. Yep. Uh, I'm assuming they want to use their shirt again. Yeah. Yeah. So roll those white dice. So now they've got... Uh, oh, they have to roll black for the shirt, right? Yeah. Okay. So the two <laughs> white dice are going to be the attack for the um, the capesicle. So that's a seven and a seven. Ooh. That's 14. They've got how much? Uh, ten. 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 So they rolled a. They rolled four. So they rolled 14. <laughs> that, that, Attacker that, that wins on ties. Attacker wins on ties. Oh. So it's still going to do four damage. Okay. Because of the shields on the other thing. The shields on the white dice. Okay. Go to the other one. So the conversation is about whether it should have moved to be in front of that or it should have to move to attack. Can I give me the mouse before I... Diagonal is also adjacent. It wouldn't move from diagonal or you would get a break attack. Right. So they're saying that it would have been here. Okay. So... um, Which means what? It would have been at the diagonal. Diagonal is also adjacent. It won't move from diagonal or you would get a break attack. It won't move through the move through an opponent attack by choice, what he said. Right. Okay, so it goes there. So it goes there. So because attacker wins on ties and they met each other in terms of the value, the attack succeeds. The values were equal, but they get bonus damage equal to the number of shields they rolled on their dice. So they rolled four shields. That's four damage that's done directly to Nightingale. You know that because? Uh, It's at the bottom of Cave Skull here. So plus Plus one one physical physical damage. damage. Cool. I'm picking it up, guys. Yeah. So proud of myself. I want to thank you all for coming and joining us and helping us learn. Um, You know, we're live, right? So not all of this is We did dodge. Oh, we did. It added four. Did dodge. Um, It added four. Right, so but the defense is ten, so because they rolled two sevens, it met, and then the attacker would win on that. Yeah, defense fourteen. All right, so then that cycles. That's the end of the first round. Yep. So we're gonna add a time tracker to show where we're at. All right, and uh, it's gonna be uh, yeah. your turn. No worries. Thank you so much for being so very helpful. We really appreciate it. So where am I at? So can I jump forward and attack the cave circle? I can move through friendlies, correct? Yeah, so but you're I'm not going to diagonally, so it doesn't matter. Hold on one second. At the beginning of my turn, I gain back stamina, correct? Yes, you gain back three stamina. Three, three stamina. All right. So, I'm sorry, what were you saying, Anne? Um, uh, it doesn't matter about moving through friendlies because you're not going to move diagonally. You're move orth- orthogonally, and it's one, two, three. So, Fubarbox is asking, so harder or easier than KDM, and will it work as my KDM replacement for when I want more story and an actual dungeon crawl? Uh, I think so. I, I don't... Difficulty slightly different. Um, it's hard to say just because of how familiar I am with yeah. KDM. Um, I'd th- say it's about even, to be completely honest with you. Probably a little easier because the gear grids aren't quite as complex because these are seemingly like they kind of work with anything and there's no affinities to match up. See, I told you. Oh. That's my favorite phrase for this whole show. It, I thought that it does cost an additional move to make f- to go through friendlies. It probably does because there's a special text on the cave sickles that said that they don't have affected yeah. um, movement through friendlies. Um, so, Pug Lover, this is definitely a very a, a, a meteor board game, the most. I know you had mentioned like earlier that you're just getting into board games. But so, and I'm just going to give a quick pitch, real cool, quick. Yeah. There's three of us here on the stream, and we're all super different people, which. Just, you know, we're friends, and friends are all super different people, but we like intentionally being different because that way you can associate yourselves with one of us. If you are salty and rude, you can be Matt. If you are mumbly and rude, you can be Josh. If, if you're, you're loud and rude, you could be Anne. But I am totally, I, I come from video games. I'm super newer to board games. So if you're newer to board games, Follow me, because you and me, we're, we're in it together, you and I. So thank you, Reiterate. Um, it costs one more movement point to leave the square of a friendly, just like a hindering terrain. Very cool. Thank you. So We'll learn together. Can I? So I can then move through the bug there. I mean, not the bug, the, the one, nightingale. Two, You're not going diagonally. Why would you do that? One, two, three. Oh, because I wanted to. I wanted to move through them. Uh. Can I say I move through them, just in case? I almost bumped my screen, but I'm very <laughs> 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 
pound it! Okay, sit down. <laughs> All right, so uh, that was my one. So I spent one uh, SP yep. to move. So now I can attack. So you can use your, your blade chop and not use two SP right oh, now. So these are un, unexhausted yes. now, right? As well as my blade works? Yep. Everything unexhausted at the beginning of your turn. So I can use this to save my SP is what you're saying. Yes. So I can exhaust this. I'm going to make an attack roll using my two swords. So my short swords. So that's two white dice that I'm rolling. Right? Right. Uh, and I rolled a seven and a four. So seven and a four is greater than eight. Um, Nobody can see what you're doing. So where the, the, the cave sickle uh, has a defense of eight. So 11 is greater than eight. So it's going to do three damage to it. And then because of the short sword's abilities for every two shields, that's plus two physical damage. I rolled three shields, so it's going to give me plus two. So 13 is five more than eight, so he's going to have one health left because they have six health. It had two damage from Twitch shooting a magic missile. Though. So, so it's, it's dead. dead. Cool. I That one did or the red? The red one just jumped in the oh hole and right. never got touched by anything. Yeah, he's dead. Yeah, he's dead. He did. That's how you so do it, guys. So we're going to get another loot card? So we got we got seven more monies. Oh, what's KDM? Guys, you give your quick KDM. So Kingdom Death Monster is a dark fantasy board game, strategy board game, cooperative, where you're fighting monsters in a dystopian horror environment, collecting resources, crafting gear, and dying. So uh, the guys are on a hiatus right now, but they've played through quite a few seasons. Uh, back to having different tastes. KDM is not really my jam, so this is definitely for a game for the guys. If you're interested in learning about what KDM is, make sure you check out our YouTube channel where you can see all of the seasons that they've played. Uh, KDM is also an interactive play, just like we're doing with Madara. So, so join us in, in a couple weeks when we actually kick resume the kickoff or resume the KDM Twitch plays. Um, we'll go into a new campaign of that, and you can join us and be interactive with that as well. It's a great way to find out if it's a board game, especially the board games with a higher price tag. It's a great way to find out if you enjoy the game enough to make the investment. Uh, so can we remove the uh, the guy from the board, please? Oh, here's the other two life counters. Can you remove the cave circle from the board? I have to get the life counters off first. Can you remove <coughs> the cave circle from the board? Matt, he wants to be your friend. Okay, thank you. You're not uh, Matt, welcome. can you use one of your swords just to move diagonal so I don't have to... So my slow ass is enough to move through you. Where? I can't see. There, diagonally. Sneaky move, sis. Yes, I'll exhaust one of my cards to move diagonally. We were looking at the money. I'm not yeah. listening to you. Best thing ever. And uh, please Crimson? move me diagonally one. We'll find out. Uh, Yeah. Well, well, we'll hope. We'll try. We'll do as best as we can. So that's the end of my turn. It is now Remy's turn. Uh, some of the cards are so trippy with the green screen effect. It is the Twist Gaming exclusive cards. We could have used glass instead, but <laughs> we decided to stay with green screen. I really hate you. Okay, uh, it is Remy's turn. I'm just going to, there's no, one, two, three. I'm just going to. No, 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 no not, not free stuff. We, we, I don't think we've gotten any. One, two, well, we've given three. away free stuff for KDM. Um, I got a couple. I got the Echoes of Death for free. We've given away a lot more. Oh, we've given a lot more seven. free yeah. stuff. If you like free yeah. stuff, definitely continue to watch the stream. <sighs> okay, so now it is Twitch's turn. And you could fly and fly to the other side of the I rock if you want. I have a movement of seven, so I can't. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Or you could spend, spend an SP extra SP to move, to move two, two more spaces. spaces if you wanted. I don't want to. Okay. Lazy. Thanks for telling me how to live my life. Lazy ass. All right, <laughs> so it's Twitch's turn, so all they can do is what? Move. Move. Just not in Why'd you hit move? Me? Rook's way. Because you called me lazy. I needed to expend energy so I could beat you. <laughs> so, they, I guess they could try to move the rock, though, no? <gasps> yeah, the totem should be moved. Wait a second. Oh, yeah, the, the, I guess it's, like, gone. Uh, so this isn't, yes. Totems we do as soon as they're in line of sight. The blue one is what spawned the cavesicles. The red one is behind a wall. Okay. Okay. Cool. Uh, what's Remy's strength? Her emotional stability. Uh, that uh, what's uh, Nightingale's strength? Her cute outfits. Any other questions? What do you mean her strength? Oh, it's over here. Two. Two. Uh, probably not the best to move the rock. Yeah, probably not. No. This is Rook supposed to move the yeah, If you rock. don't reveal the next one, you're going to get urgency tokens. I don't know what that means. 
You guys are just staring at the table. Yeah, I, I don't. Now. I don't know, or just I. I don't remember. We kind of like rushed this really easily. When, uh, uh, this that's is why that you're we're taking bad. your time We're now. moving too slowly. Yeah. We're gonna points. So then, should I spend it? All right. So then I'll back up and spend my SP so that I can move faster. No, no, no. So don't do anything else three. to benefit the rest of the team. It starts as three. What's my extra moves? So to do the extra moves, I have to spend uh, one SP. You get two movement. So I spent one because I moved. I can spend another one, and I get two movements. So then I am at, what did I say? Seven was here, eight, nine. So Sharp Chris was asking about the volume of viewers today. Okay, so if no monsters activate during a round, then you get urgency tokens for each round. If you get four, you lose. Um, all right. Yeah, kick Kickstarter traffic. Hello, Kickstarter folk. Yeah, so Kickstarter traffic. I put a post up on BGG. Uh, we have a couple other things going on, too. If the enemy AI does not take an action, you get one urgency token. If you get four urgency tokens, uh, so Metal God said you'd lose, but I prefer to say you die. I don't think the school kills you. Did you not hear Shayla's whole speech? The monsters will kill you. Yeah, she was but very clear. Urgency token's not a monster. <laughs> That's what you say. You're a monster. Yeah, I am. This isn't line of sight, is it? Center to center? No, because the wall's right there. Yeah, you have to move one more space. Okay, I don't... No, you fail the test, and then your big sister murders you. I would murder my little sister if she failed the test. Should I move that one space and trigger the totem? Yeah, it doesn't hurt. Yes. All Do right, it. so then I, I'm going to spend... I hate you. I'm going to move here because I want to go over the chasm and get the blue thing. The chasm. So you uh, did the red totem, correct? Yes. My wife becomes a monster <laughs> when she gets enough urgency tokens. <laughs> As you peer around the corner, you see a handful of cavesicles skittering about. They spring into action when they notice you. The cavesicles are blocking the path that leads deeper into the cave. Spawn two cavesicles adjacent to the space this totem occupied. Across the gap... I'll let you finish first. Uh, I am purple. Make the chick sign. Oh, it's over here. Okay, adjacent. So he goes here, and here, and there, and this. Uh... Across the gap, you see another cavesicle emerge near a small box. Place uh, Spawn what? one more cavesicle adjacent to the blue loot token icon. Oh, this is the one I gotta go beat up. No, it's just, it's just one, so it's gonna be the third color on that. It's one card. It's not a second. There's only three. But it's not a separate group? No, there was four before. Because we had to go But we didn't three. have three in one group. Oh, it should have been three in one group. All right, so... I, I gave you the wrong colors because I, I, I'm colorblind and I can't read. There's numbers on there. Or did the numbers correspond to those bases? Nope. Anne's just being rude. <laughs> yes. So if you make fun of people's disabilities, then you're probably like Anne. <laughs> 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 All right. So um, then, where did the, those are going to have the? You put have to in roll the initiative. I was going to say how black die. Black die for three of them, right? No, it's one, one group. One group. Yep. Oh, okay. Sorry. Look, I know. I know some stuff, guys. Oh, so we rolled. Gotcha. We rolled two dice last time because there was two groups. There's yes. only one group this so time. So Shafari was saying we always divide two and two in the creatures. That's the conversation. So last time we had four and we had two groups and we had two. We were doing two in Matt, each group. Did you hide the uh, overlay for the dice? Yeah. Why? <laughs> Any other questions? What did you do? Do I have to request it again? Probably. Maybe. Hit the button. Hit he doesn't know. He just wrote the code. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Hit button to find out. The, you know what the correct response is, right? Question, Question mark. mark. your Facebook profile video. <laughs> so, one. So, it's going to go here. And it's based off of books? Yes. Okay. Uh, two and two seems correct, but I don't <laughs> know if it's spelled out in the rules anywhere. Yeah, I feel like when the narrative says this group spawns here and that group spawns there, that like narratively speaking, like I get I get Metal Gods, like I get I get the I get the point, like it should always spawn to the lowest number, but like I feel like Nobody's watching me. All right, so it is now whose turn? Uh, your mom's. It's not. She's I'll not here. For that. She's I a very nice lady. Wrong. She's very funny. So, I like her a lot. uh, you just went. Remy just went. So she it's now Nightingale's yeah, turn. Yeah, she right? put up with you. <laughs> yeah. So nice. Nightingale can't really do much because their strength is kind of poopy. She could do magic. But what she could do is that she can kind of just stay where she's at, and or she, I guess she could magic as well. That's true. So, uh, cast... She doesn't have line of sight because of the wall. Oh, that's and she doesn't have line of sight here either because of the big stone, right? Yeah. 
Because that counts as a block. Well, Pretty unless she moves one. diagonally and then gets line of sight from back there across to this guy here, or does your character break line of sight? It shouldn't. You should be able to. She should be able to move into that spot and get line of sight. Where into this one? Yeah. One two. Yeah. And go this way. Yeah. Yeah, because I duck. Jump? Who's jumping? Wait, what? Do not, not jump. jump. <laughs> 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 no. Uh, on a yes, run the through, they use two cards two. for the three. Two on one card and one on the other because of them coming from different areas in the narrative. Or so I, I'm not, yeah, I'm figuring this out. On a run through, they use two cards. Oh, you just read that part. It's agility. What's agility? Who's jumping where? she got to fly. I'm so confused. All right, go here. So then they would attack. Then Zeke is the they best jumper, three? but nobody can catch him if he drop if he drops. <laughs> um, so you started mm. off with three stamina. The shirt's going to unexhaust. Yeah. And but we're gonna use one because we used two movement to get out of the way. This will give us line of sight to the orange. 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 Uh, you doesn't it have to be sphere of influence though? I don't know. Yes. So uh, she can't because it's not four away. Oh, one, two, three, four. I was asking before if it was line of sight or sphere of influence. You didn't really explain that. Sorry. Cool. So <laughs> then, essentially, though... They should move out of my way so Rook can go move the rock. I mean... Sure. Um, I just checked the rules. Spawn in. It's from the character that activated it that okay. you did the books for. Okay. So... Two square jump is easy, and Zeke could add his strength. Okay, so explain to me how jump works, because I don't understand. What's new? That's why you ask questions. It's important to ask questions and learn new stuff. So that's going to be the end of Twitch's turn. But the nice thing is on the next turn when they gain their three agility. It should go uh, up. agility. Stamina points. Yeah, it one, goes. Two. One, two. Yeah, three, five. So they go up to max. Yeah. Which is cool. Yeah. So Josh is looking that up right now. Uh, in the meantime, while he's looking that up, he's also going to take his turn. <laughs> so he's going to move agility five. Agility 10 one, three, skill three, check three, is four, what you five. do. Okay, so it's agility 10. Why can I add my strength? One, it should two, be your agility. Three. So why was someone saying I could add my strength? I don't know. I thought Crimson said that Zeke oh, could add Or strength. they may add a single ally strength to their roll when making the skill check. Agility plus purple, two times versus difficulty, assisted by strength. Oh, plus assisted by strength. So I could use your strength if you were close <laughs> enough, Plus Josh. two difficulty for each extra score. Uh, I need two purple dice. Is these, are these the purple ones? Yeah. What's, um, I rolled a 12 plus a 6. That's 18 it was a ten, for my skill check. I believe it was a 10. Yeah, it was a 10. During so adventurer's movement, they may choose to jump over spaces which they would otherwise prefer to not move through. Jumping is defined as moving over one or more spaces without being affected by the terrain's effects. Jumping may only be done during the move action or free movement, and jumping over spaces expends movement points in the same way movement does. During movement, an adventurer declares that they're jumping. Designate a space for the adventurer to end their jump on. Each space jumped over requires a movement point. The space being jumped out of must be unoccupied, normal terrain space. The space being jumped over cannot be occupied by another figure, so you can't leapfrog somebody. The space being jumped on into may be any type of terrain, but cannot be occupied by another figure. To check if the jump was successful, make an agility, t agility 10 skill check. For each additional space moved over after the first, add two to the difficulty of the skill check. If one or more allies are adjacent to the space the adventurer is jumping out of, they may add a single ally's strength to their roll. Okay, cool. So I can toss people over. Yeah. yeah. So you're going to then push that one space forward. Forward or to the side? One adjacent unoccupied space. Adjacent. So it goes in the chasm. Chasm. I throw it in there. All right. Uh, it sh if the space the token is moved onto is dangerous terrain, discard it. Yeah. Um, all right, so then that's... Or are you continuing, Josh? Um, you might as well. You've got extra... He can't move. He's got extra I can't SP. Move. Oh, he can't move twice. I right. can't move twice. Uh, and that cost me an SP to do that. Um, so I really... Um, He's just going to sit there, stand there and block the way. Where... Who got hurt? Twitch? Yeah. Uh, what's their max health? 14? 14. No, 12. I don't know. No, they got plus 12. 2 from the shirt. Or I thought they have plus 2 from something. Yeah, plus 2 from their defensive core, so it's 14. Uh, it took a lot of damage. Uh, I'm going to heal Twitch 6. All right. Uh, I get these heal tokens. So my uh, my discipline is mend. 
Then I get two of these heal tokens per an encounter. And man, 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 man. He's man, the man. healer and the tank. Yeah, kind of ridiculous. <laughs> gain two heal tokens. When these tokens are spent to heal an ally other than yourself, gain an SP. Do you have to be adjacent? No, uh, with my sphere of influence is what the token says. Spend one SP and a figure within sphere of influence heals six. Cool. So they are adjacent to me too. He's a paladin. And then you get to discard it, right? Yeah, discard <laughs> this. <laughs> and then I heal them six, so they're at. What quick, are they at? Quick, what are they at, Josh? Damn it, I was right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's the end of your turn, though, right, Josh? Uh, Yeah. So uh, it, it didn't cost me any SP to do that since I gained one. It's spent one. Um, Why did you go and not the caves? Oh, caves sorry. Place? Because you guys yelled at me to go for some reason. So he's blaming other people for his misdoings. I was reading the rules. It's like, oh, Matt, uh, Josh, read the rules and then do your turn. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Blame others. So it's going to be the Cavesicle's turn. So red's going to go first. So it's not adjacent to anyone. So it's going to do a ranged attack on the uh, on you, Anne. Yeah. So um, it's going to roll. Now there's a couple. Of, it's just one other in his sphere of influence, correct? Correct. So now we have the upgrade. So he gets a white and an orange die. All right. So a white and an orange die. Yeah, I had the two uh, crimson. I just spent one of them. So, and what's your defense? My defense is a dodge. nine. Do you want to dodge? Oh, dodge, yeah. I have a shirt. I'm going to shirt. I'm going to shirt. <laughs> shirt yourself? <laughs> All right, so uh, you can dodge this. So you roll a black die. <coughs> Don't be a skull. Don't be a skull. Don't be a skull. Don't be a skull. Books. Books for days. Books for Doesn't days. help. Um, so how about your defense again? Ten. Ten. So they rolled an eleven. That's poopy. Um, so it's going to do one damage plus a damage modifier of one two. So you're going to take three damage, Anne. That's poopy. Then it's going to move up next to you. Yeah, because it's got a follow up. And it's going to do an fu attack. There, diagonal's close enough. All right. So another white and an orange. I can't dodge again. Oh, can I counter if I exhaust my ability core? What is counter? I can hit it, right? Uh, uh, I probably have to just attack. I believe you have to spend two. It says you have to spend two of your uh, uh, I guess zip zero during the auto. counter step of an attack. If the attack missed or dealt final zero damage, then you may counter. You can do it for free, though. Why? That lets you do the counter for free. Typically, it costs two SP to do it. Yeah, so that's a freebie, but it's only if the attack misses. So they rolled a six and a four, so that's ten. It's just you enough. Got ten, so it's going to do two damage. two damage because there's two shields. This is poopy. So also, Anne, it was a you have to do a force nine. What am I rolling for that? Um, I believe it's a black die, and you add your. I thought it was a white die. I don't know. Do you have SP left to dodge again so you don't get right? No. Nope. Uh, force, you must succeed a conviction check. That's purple. Oh. So, yeah, it's purple. I have two you. purple die for my conviction. No, you don't. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> uh, just put the thing Okay, so you thing. got two purple die. Nine. Uh, it's a nine. So you're good. Okay. So that was the first one. Now the next one that's going to go is going to be purple. So purple is going to do Not a range attack against you. Yep. So he's going to do a... Let me reset these dice. Do you have any upgrades to conviction check because of the core? No. My ability core gives me... Uh, I can exhaust a counter. All right. So you are... Good roll. Poison's nasty. You're getting an attack. That is an 8. Guys, that's rude. And a 3. That's an 11. That's a hit. So there's another shield. So that's 2 more damage to you. And then he's going to move adjacent to you. Is my juice box a free action? Oh, what does it say? Discard? Th yeah. yeah. Uh, Can I do a free action in the middle of attack? No, right? Probably not. I don't know. Um, so, Anne, he's going to move closer to you. Great. So move adjacent. Wonderful. Now the other one is within his sphere of influence as well. Th wasn't he before, too? No. Yeah, he was. No, the orange one. Oh, great. So now he's going to be a teal, an orange, a black, and an extra damage. No. Two orange. There's only two other. Oh, yeah, that's right, that's right, that's right. So please roll two that's orange. That's a defense, not an extra damage. Kidding. We don't see the screen. 
You had the card cover and everything. Yeah, sorry. I was right, though. <laughs> uh, so, and that's a six. Roll low. And it's four. That's a ten. Just enough. They only do one damage to you. So because it's Jason, Ann, you need to make a force check. Conviction check, rather. Ten. Okay, so you don't get poisoned. That's good. Uh, so then the last one is going to go. So the last one is not in range of you. So uh, I've been uh, four. I'm sorry, he's not in, in adjacent to you. So he's going to uh, do a range attack to you. And he can't jump, right? Because uh, jump is two. The good thing is that only one other is in the sphere of influence. So he's going to attack first. Great. So he's going to do white and orange. Yeah. How you doing there, Ann? Not so great. Oh, you only have four health? Shut up, Matt. Man. I just got to make it through this so I can have my apple juice. Why didn't you kill those guys, like, faster? I hate you so much. Uh, So y they rolled an eight <laughs> and a two. That's a ten. Guys, this is a bad roll. So that does one damage to you. No, no, no. no. That was the arranged attack. Oh, okay. Uh, so then... Matt is a capsicle. <laughs> he's going to try and move adjacent to you. No, he's not. So he's going to try to jump where the, the two space. Where? Like here? Yeah. He's gonna so that way. one, What's his movement? two, three. His movement's four. So he can't. He can't. So he's just going to move to that space. He's, he's not going to be able to one, jump. One, two, three. Yeah. Yep. And he can't do anything. So he can't attack you there. All right. Okay. So now it's my turn. I move the rock. Yeah. You I need heal Twitch. I'm going to heal you now. Thank you. Go oh, wait. Are you within my sphere of influence? No. S is that like sphere. a sphere? And I can't do my ju juice box because it doesn't say it any time, so I have to do this on my turn, which it just gives me heal three. Can't he move next to the purple one? Uh, one, two, three. No, because this is still – he can't jump diagonally. So he could jump this way, and that would be one, two, three, four, five, right? He can four jump minutes. three and land diagonally, Metal God says. I really Can you please find the capsicle rules? can jump three and land diagonally. One, two, three. You can change directions during jump, though, I think. <laughs> so he could land next to the purple one, because it's four spaces, technically. So you can jump that distance. But I thought he could only jump two open spaces. Yeah, so technically he'd be jumping one, two, three, four spaces. Right, but this is three. So what I'm saying is, is that these are three open spaces. Yeah. And I thought that j monsters will only jump up to two squares. So oh. it's not going to jump the third square. Oh, okay. Uh, I don't know where the jump thing is for the monsters. I don't think monsters broke golden rule for jumping two squares. Okay, gotcha. So he could jump here, but that like that's it. Unless he's jumping actually diagonally okay, this way. That was weird. The white die came out of nowhere and then disappeared. <laughs> Anne is right. Relish that, Anne. I am, because <laughs> I had lots of wrong, so I'm going to hold on to that real tight. All right, so Josh, uh, that's the end of your turn, right? Yeah, I, I, I couldn't do anything more than what I did. So it's now a new round. So at the round, do we all get it, or is it our turn? Your turn. Oh, so now it is Zeke. So, so that's me. I go up to max. It's S a monster AI golden roll. Okay, so can I get adjacent to that red one? Um, you can use your blade to move diagonally, and then it would be one, two, three. Yeah. Okay. You could just use your normal movement. I could just use my normal movement, no? <laughs> Anne? What? Sorry? I could just use my normal movement, correct? Uh, you would have to spend an extra uh, movement point one, to move. One, two, th three, four, five, six. Yeah. I've got six movements, so I, I yes. I thought you want to use your blade. Why would I want to use th my blade if I could do this for free? Whatever. <laughs> okay. So I spent a SP to move there. Um, then I'm going to attack. Attack, 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 attack. So you spend a 2SP attack, or are you going to use your skill? I guess I'll use my skill. What's your skill? Uh, so my skill is the, the blade works, so that's going to give me a freebie attack. So I need to roll two white dice. I don't have them. Oh, we're on round two, by the way. Or we did two rounds. So I rolled three. six and seven. Uh, so that is 13. Their defense is eight, so it succeeds. And then I do another four damage, so that's 17. He's dead. <laughs> Thank you for just throwing the mini on the floor. We might, maybe we'll need them later. Yeah, it's not then you'll have to get up. Uh, so then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to exhaust one of my short swords to move diagonally. 
sorry, uh, you pause. <coughs> you pause. So Aether said, sorry, I don't know the rules of this game. We're learning two. But if it can land diagonally, couldn't it jump one, then go diagonal next to the purple? Not arguing, just trying to... Um, I think so, yes. But so, right. So he was over here originally, and he has a move of five. So Four. One, one, two, three, four. It's like he wouldn't. So he oh, wouldn't. I'm sorry, have. he's got a movement of six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Could it? But not when he moved from the space he was in. Can He can change direction. D can he can change direction while jumping? Yeah. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I think I think Aether r would be right in that yeah. case, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. So move it there. No, it's got a black die. You gotta roll two black dice. Yeah. Okay. So then we'll remediate here. So if it lands, then it's gonna attack you. <laughs> otherwise it stays the same. Pli no, otherwise it's dead. Roll skulls, roll skulls, roll skulls. That's no. not a skull. That's not skull either. So he's fine. Great. So now he's going to attack you, and now uh, there's he has two influence with him because correct. the other guy would still be he alive. Was still alive, so he rolls two oranges. Oranges. Aren't you glad that Aetherburn suggested that? <laughs> I'm happy that I know the rules now, and that's important. I can't. I got no SP, bro. I got no SP. You also don't have a shirt. Your shirt was exhausted. Right. That's a three. That's a good one. And an eight. eight. Uh, that's an 11. 11. So it's going to do, it has one two shield. Damage. It's going to do two damage. So, and you're at one health. You're still alive. You're not dead. You're fine. Uh, and now you have to roll for poison. It'll be fine. 14. You're good. All right. So then everything we did is valid up to this point. Okay. Yep. So then I'm going to exhaust my sword to move diagonally closer <laughs> to that purple one. <laughs> you are fine, he says. I'm talking to my... Self. Here, All right. diagonal, yeah. That's yeah. not diagonal. You just move me forward one space. It's the opposite of diagonal. It's not the opposite of diagonal. I feel like orthogonal is the opposite of diagonal. Poison would be instant death. <laughs> All right. Also, so though, it will move through a square adjacent to Anne, so Anne can make a break attack. Um. Can I make... Oh, that's a good point. Is that true? That, that's an interesting question. If you're jumping, in case of flying over a chasm, yeah, two squares adjacent actually before it attacks her. Hashtag can, help. Can it stop mid-flight <laughs> to get that opportunity? <laughs> is it the other diagonal? <laughs> yes, yes, it is. <laughs> Hi, Malfin. From a directionality standpoint. Yes, of course it is only one attack regardless. Smack him down <laughs> into the chasm. Chasm. <gasps> I'm gonna take my big warrior and go boom, and it's gonna go into the. You're chasm. gonna scrape him, and he's not gonna <laughs> die. So go ahead and make your attack of opportunity there. All right, so it's two white die. Right. We're yes. still remediating stuff. Cool. Um, yes, it's two white die. <laughs> nine. Does nine hit? Nine is bigger no. than eight, so yes. <gasps> oh my goodness, I hit. Okay. And then you're also gonna get plus one physical damage automatically. Right, because I have hammer helm. Ba bam. Stop. And Hammer then I have helm. plus one uh, for, each for each one of my shields. And because I rolled two shields, then I get three physical damage. You also got a star. A star is a uh, physical damage also. Cool. So you're going to get one, two, three additional physical damage. So you did one, plus you got four from all of your bonuses. So you do five damage. You're Re still alive. Wait, wait, wait. We rolled a two. Yeah. You can exhaust your... Ah, there you go. Exhaust my... W I can exhaust my... my the weapon that he the has. The axe? Yeah. No, I thought no. it was this one. Yeah, it's, it's a... Oh, your combat. Discipline. Card. Yeah. It's a four with one shield. I'm okay with so this. So now you kill him. Yes. So you smack him into the chasm. That's a great idea. So then, <laughs> Anne, he does not damage you because you killed him in the flight. I am not high-fiving you. I'm high-fiving my peeps. High fives all around. I mean, he didn't tag him. I mean, that, I mean sure. Cool. Whatever, whatever works for you. Whatever makes you sleep better at night. I at least you didn't throw that one off the table. <laughs> <laughs> One shot, war axe, angel of death. Bam. At least you're playing Remy better la than the last time you played her. Last I mean, time you played her, you she didn't hit anything. On the show? Are you still yeah. here? Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that was good. Uh, so I hit seven and five is <laughs> 12. Um, so 12 is more than eight. Is it? Pretty sure. Okay. So that's four plus an additional two <laughs> damage. So that's six. So I kill him too. 
There was drama and suspense and, and can action. Can you take the totem off the map too? Please, thank you. You reach it. I'm just gonna try. <laughs> All right. So loot. Little arms. Loot. How much loot? loot. Uh, seven gold. Seven. And then this goes away. Bleh. And then this goes away. Bleh. I just like making the noise and throwing stuff. All right. So do I need to do anything else on my turn? You need to get the hell up out my way. So are you going to fly across that, that gap there and get that loot? Yippee. Okay. So my movement is regular. I start back up with three because it's the beginning of my turn. My shirt on exhausts. Uh, I am going to... So Remy has natural flight, which is two SP to do natural flight. Good night. Thanks for joining us. Good night. Night, night. I'm, I'm not jumping. Uh, so make a move. Remy has flight for the duration of the movement. So okay. I need to spend two. So I had three SP. It's going to go down to one. Uh, and then, But I get to cross the chasm. Chasm. One, two, three, four. Wouldn't you go to the one closer to the exit? What? I guess so. One, two, three, four. Ba -ba. And then you spend your last SP to open the chest. Do I have to spend an SP to open the chest? Yes. Encounter. Encounter actions are specific actions that adventurers may take, like... a. Activating loot tokens. Yeah. Okay. So I get the blue loot. The blue? Uh, you find a pile of treasure. Gain two random consumables. Do I have to give them to anybody? Mundane consumable. It just says two random consumables. Assuming that means mundane. You know what happens when you assume? Makes an ass out of Umi. And she's a really nice girl. You shouldn't do that. Here, have a blue loot token. This level is mundane. Uh, you're mundane, Josh. How oh, many? Super exciting. Two. Chest goes boom. I would laugh. I'm pretty. No, that would not be funny. Watch it be a mimic. Okay, so what's my carry capacity? I don't recall. Uh, I want to say three or four. So, and got some barbed arrows. Wait. So, barbed arrows are combo archery. Flip before rolling for an attack. If this is drawn as a reward from an adventure mechanic, you redraw. Does that say that? Yeah, it's on the bottom. May. Yeah, yeah, I don't want arrows. Okay, uh, she actually drew both of them as arrows. Waiting for a chest to eat, Matt. Uh, so then you got an arrow. Yeah, fungal. Now, hold on. This Wait. one doesn't have that ability. Oh. Uh, so you just got to play it. I'll flip it. I'll flip it over. Oh, is that consumed? Oh, okay. Yeah. You may redraw. <laughs> Sorry. Give it. Wait, where are you going? Come on. Uh, everyone has three. Rook has four slots. Come on. Uh, so you got a blessing. bottled blessing. Everyone so it is four. a potion. Discard. At any time, an ally within a sphere of influence may do one of the following. Heal three, re-roll any dice you just rolled, or gain one SP. All right. Uh, and then you also got a bottled blessing. So you got two of them. Um, also, if we get bombs, keep them. They save our butts. Notice <coughs> the at any time on that one. So this was, okay, yeah. So this is talking about, I also have a juice box. So what um, we're talking about is the fact that I can't use my juice box at any time, but I we could use the bottled blessing at any time. So that's very good. So do throwing knives count for my carry? Yep. So, so then I have I to discard two things. I don't. Oh, okay, never mind. Sorry, I was reading that one. Um, you can drink that juice and heal yourself. That's but an excellent idea. But, but this is the end of it. Why would she use that now? Uh, is it the end, Matt? Is it? I don't know. So the juice boxes. Hell, oh, three. are you guys metagaming? Cool. Heals three. You're an adjacent ally. Heals three. So that can go away. And then I could do the bottle blessing. No, this has got a lot of good stuff. Oh, but the, the throwing knives are really good, too, because it's just a purple attack die with line of sight, I'm pretty sure. What do I want to get rid of, guys? Knives are excellent. <sighs> I don't Your know. Loot can go to your pack, no? <coughs> I, don't, I don't think so. Maybe? You can put you can put three in your pack. So what's your pack? I don't know. Is that your not That's active gear? I'm assuming. This is what happens when we haven't played the game in like ever? I haven't played this. Yeah, stuff is just not on hand to use. It's your bag. Oh, so then I can just put this in my bag? Yep. Yeah. Oh. Backpack, backpack. Okay, <laughs> cool, done. Thank you. Okay. It yeah. takes one SP to shuffle your pack with yeah, on-hand items, yeah, that's right? Yeah, that's correct. So here's the thing. That's the re-equip thing here. So oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Cool. Great. Awesome. Is that the end of your turn, finally? Uh, yeah. So Twitch is just going to speed walk over, I guess. Oh. I mean, they could jump. 
Would jumping cost less? Things it would be fun. <laughs> All right, so how do we do? Oh, also, can't she add? She can use the assist because he's adjacent, right? Yep, I, I, I could, I could toss Twitch <laughs> over the gap. Let's do it. Let's can, can do you guys? Do you guys <laughs> want to jump over the gap, or do you just want to walk across? Oh, throw the door. It's, it's. I mean, you could put up a pole for them too, Josh. Yeah. We'll just let chat decide. Throw us. Throw us. You know, we have the technology to ask these questions in <laughs> a traceable manner. He doesn't. I know it, it takes like 15 Effort. seconds for you to, to type something, but don't you know. Jump. <laughs> jump, don't jump. Walk. You're not even on the page yet. Why does it take you so long? Because you have 8 million tabs open. That's why. How many of them do you think are relevant right now? I can tell you he's got two tabs open that are of the same exact thing. <laughs> Eat <laughs> the princess. <laughs> you will fudge up your mask. You should have put get yeeted or walk. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you have two tabs up that are the same exact thing? I don't know. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so, so this is this is part of that interactivity that we've got here, guys. Yes. So, make your choice known. Yeet sounds good. <laughs> uh, so, how do you get extra voting power, Matt? Uh, if you're a sub, you get more voting power. So what do I mean by a sub? That means that you are a metaphysical sandwich. Yeah. Not of a submarine? The submarine variety. From Publix. Correct. Oh, I'm feeling cruel. Cool. <laughs> While the other option seems like a smarter choice, yeet. <laughs> 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 yeet away. Now, so Josh, one of the prerequisites <laughs> here is that when you do yeet them across the gap, <laughs> you have to go, Kobe, to increase your <laughs> accuracy. <laughs> You're so stupid. <laughs> You are all horrible <laughs> people, and I will laugh when our poor little bird dies. No. <laughs> Throw the princess down the hole, I guess. <laughs> all right, so they, they don't get yeeted. So remind <laughs> me again <laughs> of these jumping mechanics. They're going to do a skill check, so they need to roll two purple dice. Oh. And they're going to add their agility. All right, so why two purple dice again? Because uh, that's what you use for a skill check. All right. So two purple dice... Where do I register my sub status on Twitch? The Submarine Association still <laughs> uses paper cards. <laughs> <laughs> so they roll two purple dice. They add their agility, and they're adding your strength modifier. Uh, yes. And then it's 10 plus one for the additional gap, right? Two. So it needs to be... Two. Yes, I'm sorry. So 12 that it needs to beat. So they rolled a six and a two. It's an eight. Plus their agility modifier. What's the agility modifier? Uh, five. So that's 13. Okay. So that's they, to do it themselves. they succeed. But we're adding Rook's strength. So how much strength do you have? Six. Six. Say, it, say it. Say it. Well, I don't Co remember. Kobe. Kobe. <laughs> like Kobe Bryant. You have to Kobe. He thinks Kobe beef. Yeah, Kobe beef. <laughs> so you successfully, <laughs> you were successfully yeeted across the gap. <laughs> <laughs> you just go really high up in the air <laughs> and then down. But they need to roll a black die for each space, right? No, I no it's just no, the monster. That's the monster. Oh, sorry. It's just a skill check. Yep. Oh, whoops. I uh, ignore that. I'm just going to, I could cancel it now. I'm going to, you don't get to <laughs> no. do it. You have the power. I have the power. <laughs> All right. So, um, yeet successful. That was, <laughs> did that take any of their SP to do that? Uh, it's still part of their movement action, so it cost one SP to do it. And that would have been three movement points. Yeah. Okay. So then they still have some movement. Yeah. So one, two, three, four, five. They have seven. Six, seven. Yep. With um, great power comes great responsibility. What, what were the what was their SP at before? Five. Because okay. remember we said they were gonna be up to max. Okay. Um so they could spend all their SP to get to that exit token and end this. Put um, us out of our misery. Cause I, I can't get there. There's no reason not to, right? Yeah. And it's only when one of us reaches it, right? Run boy, run. I've never heard that. Anyways, so they would have to spend one, two, three, four. So they would spend all of their SP. Go for the exit. All right. Cool. So we have reached the exit. So um, when an adventure ends on their turn. So reward, uh, restore adventures. So you uh, you wasted everything. Yeah. Sh wasted. You wasted your goose, but your goose box. Mm -hmm. um, so. It's grading. So what turn was that? Uh, that was our third round. Okay, so turn eight or less, we get 12 points. Okay, wait a second. I need a pencil. and Because none of you two are legible. Because they're like 800 and that 
drawer. Yeah, but none of them have lead, remember? <laughs> Rook did what exactly? I, Rook moved I the rock. I and I moved the rock. I moved a rock. <laughs> <laughs> it was heavy, okay, guys? He and I, I tossed you guys. He yeeted the princess. Santa does say this coach Steve. He yeeted the princess. <laughs> yeah, it's his best friend, the shame lizard, and the princess. <laughs> Obviously VIP, but he's the smartest in his class. <laughs> and the most physical. He's just really slow. Yeah. Yeah, physically slow. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. So, um, and we got 12 points for finishing before turn eight. Okay. And then we also got two bonus points for getting the blue loot. And we get an additional one point for Yeet Flare. <laughs> okay, we don't actually get that last one. I think we should, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, he is. He hit at the back and let Remy get right. Can we just, like, imagine in this narrative that instead of just throwing her the two spaces, he actually threw her all the way to the exit? <laughs> I'll take that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Like, she, she used her extra stamina points to, yes. like, get ready. Get <laughs> maybe get, like, a running start. And then he just yeeted her across the gap. I like that. I like Did he do like the uh, Mario throw? He spun her around a couple times and then threw her? <laughs> and this is how legends start. <laughs> By <laughs> line. <laughs> 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 All right, so continue to wrong way on page eight. Are we reading now? Oh, do we have a... I thought we got more points for every monster we killed. Oh, I'm sorry, we do. For each cave sickle defeated, gain two points. So we defeated four, five, six, seven, so we get 14 additional points. But one of them jumped in a hole and killed itself. I think we still get points for it. It's still defeated. Okay. Right? Sure. Like, if we jumped in a hole and killed ourselves, that would be an adventurer defeated, correct? Yeah. <laughs> Better than wrong a hole. Isn't that the, isn't that the chicken? <laughs> Excuse time, me? The time chicken? Wrong Phoenix? hole. Yeah. The, uh, his time butthole. Yeah. Oh, yeah. With his hands. Yeah. He's got yeah. jazz hands around his butthole. Yeah, it's real He weird. sucks you in and uh, changes time. This is why Katie is not my dude. <laughs> <laughs> And that's one of the least weird monsters, to be completely <laughs> honest. All right, so um, it's reading time. Yep. yep. Wah! Thank you Take for the subscription. Up. We love you. Oh, so you could also put flavor text in when you subscribe, and then this really creepy British announcer voice <laughs> reads it. Just letting you know. We got 28 points. Rook knocked on the thick stone slab with the butt of him. I'm going to say his weapon, but his You could butt. just say with Nightingale. <laughs> with his butt, no. With <laughs> <laughs> Nightingale's butt. <laughs> uh, the sound echoed like a massive stone drum. No way we're getting through that. Oh, I'm I'm yeah, that. you're supposed to say that. You didn't highlight it. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. I didn't highlight on mine either. Nightingale glared at the obstruction, kicking weakly at it. Damn it! Did we take a wrong turn? She glanced over her shoulder where Zeke and Remy watched. Seems that way. Rook lowered his weapon. Remember, this whole thing is coordinated. Hundreds of candidates are going through the same test. The monsters aren't wild. They have to be released. They have to release them for us in each area, or else we'll have nothing to fight. The twists and turns are just another part of the mast. It looks like they can seal up passages with the big stone panels. With these big stone panels. Zeke dug around in one of his pockets, coming up with a cigarette. Translation: We're too awesome for this test. They want us to slow down so they can spend time on the teams that suck. Looks like it. Rook grinned as he gestured back down the way they'd come. I think I saw a good place to camp back there. At least we aren't sucking. Remy offered, shrugging one of her wings. I'd rather be the group they have to slow down than the one that fails. Continue to setting up camp on page nine. And thank <laughs> you for the follow. I really hate that you put the thumbs up <laughs> right in the middle of the screen. That's not where I sit. And it's your line. This looks like a good spot. Remy tried to sound enthusiastic. The cavern they had chosen to spend the night in had a ceiling at least 20 feet up, damp stalactites glittering in the light of their glowstones, occasionally dripping water. Even so, most of the floor <laughs> was dry and flat <laughs> enough to serve their needs. <laughs> Saw it out of my peripheral vision. I like it. Rook gestured ahead with one meaty hand. Only one other way out should be easy to keep watch. That was one of the alerts. We don't, <laughs> we don't have to stop. Nightingale hurried past Remy into the cavern. Wouldn't it be sweet if we were the first team ever to finish the mast in just one day? Yeah. Zeke stopped right in the middle of the cave, sloughing off his heavy pack. It dropped with a dull thud at his feet. That really is very, like, meta. 
that that seems like one of our conversations. Let's go. And you're like, yeah, drop your stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but we won't. If we tried to keep going without resting, he shook his head. Better to finish a little slower and keep all of our limbs. Remy needed no further encouragement to drop her pack, tossing it to the ground. She closed her eyes, letting her massive wings stretch and flex. It felt fantastic, at least until she felt them smack something. Ow! Zeke yelped. Sorry. Remy blushed a little, uh, blushed retreating a little. I didn't mean to. Eh, nah, it's nothing. Zeke shrugged, wiping a feather off his cheek. It's better than being slapped by Knight's tail. I haven't done that in ages. Nightingale frowned at him. He returned her scowl with a wide grin, and she turned away, looking around. I guess I'll start the fire. I could help. Rook set his bag down at his feet, fishing around for a few seconds before pulling out a set of flint and steel. I want to do it! <laughs> Nightingale said with excitement as she took the tools from Rook. The mast is supposed to prepare us for whatever Madara can throw us. That means no shortcuts. Rook then pulled out another set of tools, some sticks, and tinder. No shortcuts? Why are you on Tinder right now? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> he asked while ho uh, Riley holding the objects out towards her. Flint and steel. Nightingale sighed. Flint and steel counts as a shortcut, huh? Rook only smiled back. Okay, fine. She said, swapping what she had with Rook. Then she got to work getting the fire started. Remy frowned, thinking desperately of what she could do. The other members of the team all seemed to know each other already, but they barely knew her name. She was determined to pull her own weight through the rest of the mast. Uh, I can slip and set up the sleeping bags. Remy looked down at their little pile of supplies. Sure. Zeke was the last to separate, uh, weapon in hand. I'll scout the rest of the cave, just in case. So skill check, uh, make a perception 10 with Zeke. So perception, I need to roll two purple dice. Yep, and add your perception. And six. Uh, two and six, uh, plus six is 14, which is greater than 10. Congratulations, so you succeeded. Uh, if Zeke passes, continue to check out the loot on page nine. Zeke walked the perimeter of the cave, scraping along the rock with a wooden uh, pole he'd taken from the camping supplies. That's not scraping. Where the gloom concealed, he used the pole to check for danger. There was no way to guess what the proctors might try to throw at them. Giant rats set loose into the camp while they slept. Pipers to flood the cave, or pipes to flood the caves? Whatever. Oh, <laughs> I hate, I hate that overlay so much. Oh. <laughs> you monster. Um, pipes to flood the caves? Whatever the Alenia Institute had planned for them, Zeke intended to be ready. He didn't find any secret passages, hidden traps, or insidious ways to torment them in their sleep. As he neared the end of the search, he struck a section of a rough wall that thumped strangely when he hit it just right. Hey, guys, I think there's something here. He called back before dropping onto his knees and feeling around the wall. After a few seconds, he felt a little lever give way under his touch. Zeke flinched, half expecting a trap, but instead a thin facade uh, retracted from the wall, revealing a tightly wrapped bundle. He kicked gingerly at it, sending it rolling out from the open and onto the floor in front of him without exploding, shooting acid, or sending spikes at him through the floor. He grinned, lifting the tightly wrapped bundle burlap and holding it up for the rest of them to see. Hey, everybody. Found a care package. Nice work. Rook called, not rising from his work around their makeshift fire pit. They must have hidden some supplies like this for the groups who actually pay attention. Reward. The party gains four random mundane consumables. I hope we get oh some planks. Yeah. <laughs> and can you get us some planks, please? <laughs> they're fun. And you know, they're, they're double sided. Oh, that's so kind of weird. You just, okay. you just take one. Why were we yelling? Because that's what Josh does. So Two. we got some enchanted arrows. So this has, if this card is drawn as a reward from an adventure mechanic, this is this? Yeah. Three? Okay, so we can redraw this. Four. How many do you have right now? Three. Three. Uh, so Anne's got a juice box. We box. got another juice box, so two juice boxes, and we also got two bottled blessings. Do the good ones? No planks, though. <coughs> uh, continue to cozy fire on page 10. Oh, my lord. Good story. Welcome to story time with Twist. Remy worked diligently, not bothering to keep her wings folded behind her as she laid out the sleeping mats and put the bed rolls atop them. The others were all relaxing now after their intense day, but Remy hadn't complained. 
she would show them how useful she can be. Without the shelter of a tent, Remy laid tripwires across each entrance. She didn't think the Institute would plan an attack in the middle of the night, but she wasn't going to rule it out. Rook's voice rumbled from the fire circle. That's right. Not too much. He sat on a large... That was a bad rumble, by the way. I'm sorry. He sat on a large rock, <laughs> watching Nightingale. She puffed on a ball of smoldering kindling, and soon the fistful of plant fiber started to smoke. Get it into the rest of the wood. Quick. <laughs> she hid, and soon the little fire roared to life. She did. Not she hid, because <laughs> she hid from the fire. <laughs> no! <laughs> that wasn't so hard. <laughs> Nightingale wiped her hands against her shirt. Is roughing it always this easy? Easy? It took you 20 minutes to light the fire. That's fine. Zeke said. Since returning it. from his scouting excursion, he'd watched as Nightingale and Rook struggled to get a fire lit. Nightingale only shrugged and grinned at him. Another 20 minutes later, and they were all gathered around the fire, resting on a ring of rubble they'd made from uh, made in sharing bowls of camp stew. Remy felt much better with hot food on her stomach and a merry fire crackling nearby. Nightingale smiled appreciatively. This is great stuff, Remy. I never thought camp food could taste this good. Remy looked away, though she couldn't keep the pride from her face. I used to cook for my little brothers and sisters all the time. Half the time, we had less in the cupboards than the Academy gave us to work with here. Nightingale looked up, understanding in her eyes. My family didn't have a lot back on Earth either. And now we're in Madara. Zeke's voice was more subdued you <laughs> are him. as he sipped the broth from his bowl. It's the reason why I made Bat play Zeke. <laughs> what we had on Earth isn't what we have here. Another few days, we'll be citizens. We'll be able to leave the Academy whenever we want, buy anything we want, and choose where to work. Maybe your mom will. But Balthazar and Ketsia, it feels like I'm just a tool to my parents here. Being royalty just makes me and you... Nothing more than pawns. You're a princess, though, Remy said, meeting her gaze. Isn't that exciting? Nightingale scoffed. If you like being cooped up for the rest of your life, being whisked away to a fantasy world should be about this. She gestured at the dark cave around her. Adventure? Danger? Monsters? And traps? Now that's exciting. Remy frowned and took another sip from her bowl. Nightingale patted Remy on the back. Don't sweat it, Rem Dog. I thought being a prisoner would be much cooler too. Rem 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 Dog. <laughs> Is uh, Nightingale got a little urban there? Eh? <laughs> Remy grimaced at the moniker. It happens. She hoped that wasn't something Nightingale was going to keep calling her. <laughs> Zeke shifted on his log. I don't know. It's better than being poor. His <laughs> eyes flickered towards Rook. No offense. <laughs> 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 he might be desperate Rook waved his hand dismissively And kept eating his stew Good line But my mom Or should I say Lady Ida Jong uh, He spoke her title mockingly uh, Get past all her bullshit formality and politics And I think somewhere in there is a heart I bet your parents are the same uh -huh. I doubt that I'll be lucky if this isn't the last time I'm allowed in any kind of danger, Nightingale said. It's not like it's unique to royalty, Rook replied thoughtfully. My parents here on Madar are just farmers. They're great, but I don't think farming is for me. I'd rather do something a bit more exciting, too. Nightingale made a grunt mm. in agreement. Mm -hmm. There was a long pause. Happiest moment of your life. Remy looked up and found all three of them looking at her, and she shuffled uncomfortably under the weight of their stairs. What about you, Remy? Thank you for the subscription, Thank Pug you. Lover. Thank you. Um. I've heard Zeke complain about his mom a thousand times, but I've never really talked to you. Remy hesitated, but took a breath. Well, all I have here is my father, and he's... She looked away. You know, I, I'm, I'm not really sure what kind of a person he is. Nightingale raised an eyebrow, but Remy didn't continue. She didn't want to think any less of her. Want them to think any less of her. Rook saved her from having to elaborate. We should rest. He set the pot down beside the fire, completely empty. <laughs> we need our strength for tomorrow. Remy slept uneasily in the dark cave, tossing and turning on the uneven stone. The school hadn't given them tents, and the sleeping bags they'd been given were threadbare and offered very little insulation. 
From the occasional shifting or grunt she heard in the dark, Remy was fairly sure her new friends were all equally uncomfortable. The next morning, Rook work. Ro- oh, that's a tongue Rook twister. woke. Yeah. <laughs> her with a gentle nudge and Rick the smell Rook of hot. Woke her with a gentle nudge and the smell of hot oatmeal. Oh, yeah. A quick breakfast and a little time to clean up their camp, and they started moving again. I've got a great feeling about today. Nightingale called from the front of the group. She sounded far more awake than Remy felt. So maybe we didn't finish early. That doesn't mean we can't totally own it. I'm sure we will. Zeke walked along besides Nightingale. This left Remy at the rear with Rook, though the corridor was only just wide enough for them to walk abreast. At least the way the mo- oh jeez. At least the way was mostly straight. She supposed far fewer students would make it through the mast if they were constantly getting lost. They didn't have far to go before the path widened, running along the edge of the dank pond. Remy reached out with one boot, touching the side. Water splashed and ripples echoed across the dark surface. They weren't alone. Dun, dun, dun. So we're going to leave it off here for this evening. That's going to jump into uh, the mast day two. But please join us for our next episode of Twitch Plays Madara. Unfortunately, it won't be next week because we will no. be coming to you live from Dice Tower Con. Yes. Um, so definitely check out our live coverage from Dice Tower Con. We are U.S. based. We're based out of Florida, so we operate on Eastern time. So all of the times that we do show off are Typically, 8 p.m. Eastern for our streams. Flow Rida. Flow, flow Rida, thank yeah. you. Um, we will be coming to you live uh, from Dice Tower Con all next week with some awesome board game coverage, so check it out. If you're in the Orlando area, come to Dice Tower Con and have some fun with us, play games with us. But we will be back the week after. Uh, I don't know the date of that. Pers- I want to say it's July 11th? Sounds no, about right. No, no, July no. 10th. Because that's the 11th of Thursday. Yeah. Uh, but important for the Dice Tower coverage, you mentioned how our stream started at 8 p.m. Eastern time. We'll be streaming from, I believe, 11 a.m. in the morning mm-hmm. uh, for th- for the days of Dice Tower Con, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday? Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Now, you guys are really used to us doing our interviews. Um, so we work with some of the best board game publishers, designers who are going to be at the convention, and they give you a front row seat to their new, upcoming, and even unreleased games. So it's a great way to find out what's going to be on the market. And just like with this show, all of the stuff that we do is completely interactive, so we strongly encourage you to come in on in Twitch and ask our designers and publishers any questions that you have about their games to check out what's interesting. If you have a publisher or a designer that you're interested in hearing more about or a so <laughs> specific game that you'd like to see, make sure that you let us know. You can reach us on our social media on... Facebook, Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, and come chat with us on our Discord channel where you ask questions about which publishers you want to see. No, uh, you said it the man? Sometimes. But what's new about, uh, or what's a little different about what we're doing with Dice Tower Con is we're doing events. So starting at 5, Four. 4.30. Sure. 4.30 p.m. Yes. on each of the days we're streaming. So, again, that's Thursday, Friday, Saturday. We'll be bringing you live events from Dice Tower Con. So things that you might not have seen before yeah. um, us doing. So bigger things, more interactive things with people at the convention. So we'll be having uh, Giant King of Tokyo, yes. Giant Roll for Your Life Candyman, yes. uh, playthroughs of other games that are being hosted by some of our awesome sponsors. Yep. So definitely excited to bring that. For all of our new viewers, though, I saw some questions about when we will be streaming in general, sure. not just at the conventions. So our normal stream schedule is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Always be streaming. So tech, uh, typically Mondays are either our spotlight streams where we show off games just coming out into the industry and doing in-depth playthroughs of them, teaching you how to play them, and then doing a first impression review of them. Or something we call the Board Game Gauntlet, where we find out who the best board gamers here at Twist Gaming are. It's me. Uh, where we play head-to-head games against each other and log the scores, because we like bragging rights here. <laughs> On Tuesdays, we typically have our Twitch Plays Kingdom Death stream, where we do an interactive campaign of Kingdom Death Monster. Uh, but in the meantime, we're on a little hiatus with that. Right now, we are using that opportunity to play some other cooperative games in a stream we have dubbed The bro Off. <laughs> I hate this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in case you haven't guessed, uh, Josh and I play a lot of cooperative games together. Um, do pretty well with them, and we like to, to play I mean, them. I heard you died. You died, and I, I beat the game by myself. I'm sorry. This is cooperative. Died. We won. <laughs> <laughs> I won. It's so bad. You were dead weight. You were a rook last night. No, no, no. I, I soaked the damage the first round. <laughs> okay? What happened that time you did True Dungeon? 
I died. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, go big or go home. <laughs> so then also on Wednesdays, we have a floating playthrough campaign. So we have started Twitch Plays Madara. So that'll be every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Um, as that wraps up, I don't think that's going to be any time soon. We'll be finding other games to play. If you guys have some ideas for games you want to see on any of our streams, whether that be uh, the Spotlight stream, you can reach out to publishers and let them know that they should be reaching out to us for stuff. Hey, look, that's me. Uh, you can also uh, suggest games for the Gauntlet. Um, if we've got it in-house, that makes it easy. If not, we'll look at getting them. And you could definitely suggest games for the Bro Up. <laughs> I knocked my glasses off. There we go. <laughs> He, um, he, he dabbed so hard, he took his glasses off. <laughs> oh, 5 p.m. every Thursday, no. Oof. Well, as much as we love having you here, and we're going to keep you until school starts, uh, we do upload all of our videos to our YouTube channel after the fact, so you'll be able to keep up with the storyline there. You may not be able to play interactively with us, but you'll be able to... Uh, experience some of the goings on and, and seeing us eat stuff. And make sure that you join <laughs> our Discord channel where our community can talk about what happens during the day. And if you, you know, maybe you have spoilers or whatever, you can get your input in for what way your character should be played that day. So one last thing that I want to say is we do a lot of giveaways here at Twist Gaming. So you see the uh, the boss meter at the top. Uh, so when that gets down to zero, we'll do a giveaway. If you're actually the boss when someone dies on the stream, and what I mean by when we reduce the the giveaway meter all the way and you're the boss at the end of the stream you get a special giveaway so we like to tailor our giveaways around the stream that we're doing it so we'll try and find some stuff that we can give away for madara if not we've got a bunch of random board game uh board games board game accessories and stuff that we give away as well and the cool thing is if you're a subscriber you get extra chances to win these giveaways um, we've got subscriber only giveaways and then we've also got uh, extra tickets that you'll be able to buy for the giveaways that we do and tickets are bought using something called salt Salt is, you get salt, milligrams of salt for every minute that you're watching us. Why is it salt? Because I'm a salty AMFer. <laughs> uh, so if you are watching, you're gaining salt right now. Uh, if you tip, if you cheer, if you subscribe, you get salt on top of that. So you can see we've got a lot of milligrams of salt. And you can check your salt with the exclamation mark salt command. Um, other than that, if you've got Amazon Prime, you've got Twitch Prime, you get one free sub every month. We'd love it if you used it on us and uh, unlocked some of those cool things, showed your support to us. And then one more thing. I, I feel like a broken record right now. I just keep going on and on and on. Hey, Narflix here. Hey, you and Narflix. He has a lot of salt. He has a lot of salt. <laughs> Narflix comes in. He, he eats stuff towards us, and then he leaves. You know what I love so much seeing? What's that? So you know how each of us has our own little characters? Yeah. And the icons for subscribers for, like, how long they've been subscribers, it, it's... It changes, yeah. right? So you start up as the panda, and then you work your way up yeah. to the pinnacle of the dragon. That's not the highest one anymore. <laughs> Which is, what? What did you do? Uh, Which is the dragon? They added more. They had like a three and a five year, and we, we don't have any icons there yet, but because dragon's the highest, you can get at the moment. At the moment, but it won't be for long. <laughs> Anyways, um, we do have a promotional item Kickstarter coming up. So if you guys like promo cards, promo items for games... Um, we have a Kickstarter to support Twist Gaming that will be releasing some exclusive, some unique, some rare promos for a bevy of different games. So stay tuned. That's going on on July 15th. Yes. Um, and we're super excited about yes. the publishers that we're working with on that. And I'm, I'm super happy that we've got such a wide array of unique Offering. things. Yeah, yeah, you know, we've seen the content creators that put on the pr promo Kickstarters, and we think that that's absolutely phenomenal. That's fantastic. Uh, we've been a little hesitant to do one of our own. Because, because we, we wanted to put a little twist of our own so on it. We wanted to do something different. We wanted to give you guys super cool, rare stuff that you couldn't get your hands on anywhere else. So we've been working for almost half a year, if not a little longer, to put together this Kickstarter and to work with a lot of really, really awesome people in this industry. The board gaming industry is really one of the nicest, most helpful places ever. Um, forever. For Rizzle. Uh, so we have been, yeah, we've been able to uh, work with a lot of cool people for really cool stuff. One of the things that we've announced uh, are our purple trains. So purple trains, purple trains. If you guys know Ticket to Ride, which if you're in the board gaming community, I'm sure you do. T -T uh, huh? T -T oh, I was. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, so uh, we thought that the biggest problem with that game was the lack of purple in it. So we have exclusive purple trains that you can get. Translucent purple trains um, for Twist Gaming. Uh, there might be a drawer on the top of the thing, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Ticket to ride, fangirl screaming. <laughs> uh, let me see if I could find said purple trains. I don't know where they are. Um, 
Any not them. Eh, whatever. They're we'll, somewhere. We'll, oh, I see them. <laughs> All right, well, hold on. Let's let's do our sign off and yeah. then we'll we'll get back to that. Okay. So this is officially going to be our sign-off, so thank you all for joining us this evening. We really do hope to see you again for all of our upcoming streams, especially our uh, continuation of Twitch Plays Madara and some of the exclusive content we got coming to you from Dice Tower Con and then the month after at Gen Con and every con because we're everywhere. But thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Matt. I'm Ann. Josh. Twist Gaming signing off. Have a good one, everyone. Good night. Bye.